Καλημέρα στη Λάρισα. Hello, my fellow vapers. Welcome to another episode of The Smoker Show, episode number three, always with my good friend. Look at that guy right there, Mr. Phil Busardo. What's up, Phil? Hey, folks, P. Busardo. Um, so we just we, we we weren't sure about this show because we just got back from Canada. Yeah, speaking of Canada, I've got some pictures up here from the Signature Vape uh, grand opening and launch of our own liquid line, the Vape Bromance line, right? Vape Bromance, yes. Vape the Bromance. Vape of the Bromance. What a fantastic store. It's a beautiful, beautiful store. Uh, great turnout. A lot of uh, prizes, a lot of raffles, a lot of fun times. And uh, it was just, it was great. We even had a cake. I, I couldn't believe it. Look at that. Look at this chick right here. Who's this chick? That's, that would be Rose. Hi, Rose. There's the, look at you. Look at me. What am I doing here? Like, like reaching in my pocket for my gun or something like that. I don't know like what's that. going on there. You didn't I really ask don't me know. for any of the photos from the, the event. Why did you not do that? Well, I didn't really need them. I mean, I had this, this uh, little thing. Uh, over here and up, I, I, so. do, I do know why I do know why that you uh, you like that shop so much. I, why? Know, I totally know why. Why? Because because the colors of the walls are the exact same colors of the wall that you have behind you right now, and there was a lot of pink. There were a lot of pinks and purples. Um, some very comforting, very uh, smoothing uh, or soothing, should I say, uh, colors in that shop right up your alley. Buddy. Yes, right yes, up. it had pink. You can see it right here, right like right from the window. Look at that. Look how much pink that was in there. Look at that. A lot pink, of pink on the going walls. On Pink Absolutely. neon, pink on the sign. It was it was fantastic. It was really good. It felt felt, felt right home. But in all no seriousness, yes. uh, thanks to uh, to everybody that was so very hospitable up there in Canada. We always have a, such a great time. Just, I enjoy just, Canada. I enjoy going up there. And uh, and Peter, the manager of the store and the owner, and uh, the Pixie Tech team, Pacific Smoke team, that made this possible. And uh, yeah, thanks to everybody, all the vapors that came out, and for we had a shop, wonderful time. Shop. Afterwards, we went to Thompson Hotel in downtown Toronto. It's just fantastic, this beautiful bar and club on the top, on the roof of the hotel. It was just amazing. We had a really, really good time. Very, very classy place. Yeah, Which I don't drink, know why we went over there. Cause, cause, did, you, <laughs> did you drink? Did you drink anywhere near as much as I did? Nowhere near. No, I mean I think I had three drinks maybe right. the whole night, and right. uh, which um, if you multiply that by ten. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably what you had. <laughs> probably around there. Yeah, but I'm still able to get up and function the next day, though. Yeah. I mean, everybody, I think, I think the folks who we were with, they were pretty impressed. They were yeah. pretty impressed. You know? Yeah. Well, I want to say good evening to everybody in the YouTube chat. We are monitoring it closely from here. And, uh, of course, the telephone lines are open, 215-383-5752. If you have any questions, comments, or if you just want to call and say how beautiful uh, Phil's hair looks tonight, you're more than welcome to do so. Uh, of course, you can find me on Twitter at Vaping Greek, V A P I N G R E E K. I'm monitoring that stream as well, too. No simulcast on Smoke Free Radio, but we're going to upload the audio on Smoke Free Radio on Spreaker and iTunes tomorrow. Yes. Uh, it's actually, uh, my stream is actually really, really good right now. We changed a little bit the broadcasting software. And by not simulcasting at the same time, you get a fluid instead right. of a choppy. I should, people I should be a lot more fluid. I should be you a lot are. more fluid. Do the wave. Do the wave. Uh, the way I'm doing the wave, uh, I might not be uh, dance, I dance I a little bit, dance. I'm, I'm not gonna dance. I'm not gonna dance, dance but dance. I might be uh, not as uh, high resolution as Dimitri though. Yeah. So it's either fluid fill or high definition fill. We're going with fluid fill. How's dance, that? dance a little. Bit. That's all you get. That's what you get. <laughs> yeah, not bad. I had that ready for you, by the way. Over you there. Thank you very so much. Good. I appreciate that. Was so that. good. And I can hear um, it this time too. Which is somebody's nice. already called in. Do you want to just take it right off the bat and see what happens? There's a phone call already. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, they drop. We they drop know. now. So so. Oh, okay. So. But the uh, the phone lines are open tonight, so we're going to open them up a little bit later on. If you guys have any questions or want to share your uh, your experiences with vaping? Maybe give uh, some some uh, some other people who are thinking about vaping um, some. Absolutely. 
something something that they can uh, you know get behind and 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 you know uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, inspire, save a life. Inspire, inspire. You want to save a life. You can inspire other people. That's yes. what we want. By the way, uh, a special good evening to Daniel DJ LED Vapes. He's in the. Yeah. In, <laughs> you can. He's shining in the chat. So thank you for LED joining us, Daniel. I sh- it. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll show DJ LED my giant LED that doesn't do much later on. I am a little bit bummed because Eva didn't make it uh, to the event in Toronto, and she complained that the tip. And the yes. z- on the zenith is too small, and she wants small. more girth. Yes. Okay, so keep that in mind. You're not going to get any girth from Phil. I just want to put that out there for you right now. So, so just no, quick, just throw that like, out the window. Not like you're going to get much more from uh, Dimitri. So. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, thanks, everybody. We appreciate you hanging out. And if you do know a smoker, just bring him to the chat or send him to the replays on YouTube.com slash Pibusardo under the playlist The Smokers Show. So I think we got everything out of the way. Anything else? Well, we're we're gonna add, we're gonna get right into this uh, because we this is the uh, the tank show. This is tanks, 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 and more tanks. Uh, for for most of you, uh, once again, this is gonna be a review. But this show is not necessarily for you. This show is for the smokers, and that's why we're inviting you to to uh, to to have smokers that you know in your lives come and watch this show or send them the replays, et cetera, et cetera. This is the smoker show. This show is designed to to help those people who are transitioning into vaping, thinking about transitioning into vaping, have questions about vaping. Uh, there are there are no dumb questions here, folks. Uh, they're, they're all good questions. We all have to start somewhere. And like I always like to say, somebody in this world somewhere is picking up, ele- picking up an electronic cigarette for the very, very first time, and they know nothing about what we know. They know nothing about what we know. So we need to help those people along and help them make a successful transition into a healthier lifestyle that is vaping so 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 very well said and i've had a few uh, messages in the past couple of weeks as well too from smokers or people that have sent smokers that have been inspired and they have began their journey and that makes it all worthwhile uh but first big first big first big first we have to say thank you to our sponsor and that is of course Inaken. and here's a little clip of the new zenith chroma a kit that they are releasing this week. What is up, vapors? Today we're going to give you a brief overview of the Zenith X Chroma A kit, the third edition in the platform series collaboration between Inakin, Phil Basardo, and the Vaping Greek. The new Zenith platform kit puts an ultra compact and extremely versatile 75 watt device right in the palm of your hand. With an onboard internal 2000 mAh LiPo battery, two amp micro USB quick charging support, and Inakin's integrated vape wall charging technology, this kit is always ready when you need it. The new Chroma A is the perfect fit for most popular atomizers, with its fully upgraded and completely flush 24 millimeter 510 connection. For those advanced users, you can vape with confidence using the onboard temperature control function with dry hit protection. Paired with the Zenith MTL atomizer and high milligram e-liquid or Nixalt, any given user can enjoy over a full day of temperature controlled vaping. The Zenith tank also comes with two different coil heads to tailor the vaping experience to your exact preference. Included is a 1.6 ohm Kenthal coil for a cooler vape at lower wattages and a 0.8 ohm Kenthal coil for a slightly warmer vape at higher wattages. This kit is available in both black and white finish options, along with a four milliliter or two milliliter TPD compliant tank. If you'd like to pick one up today, please check out the link in the description below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. You know what I find funny on that clip is that uh, it, it, and, uh... Eva, I hit it around. They said, even Anakin will not attempt to pronounce my name. <laughs> they just put vaping Greek. In it. <laughs> so that was funny. And, and you know, and and of course, Dimitri and I are both uh, very, very proud to be part of that project. Yes, too. yes. I, it's a very, very sexy kit. Number one, which I think that aesthetics have a lot to do with vaping. But at the end of the day, I think it's a great starter kit for somebody that's uh that's looking to get into an open system vapor, and also a great kit for somebody that's an existing an MTL or as well too all right so back to uh you know what is vaping real okay so we're gonna go through uh, a bunch of stuff again because you know that's the goal of the show um in the context of this show vaping 
is the act of using an EVP or an e-liquid vaping product. You might also know those as mods, as e-cigs, electronic cigarettes, vaping devices. We're calling them EVPs, e-liquid vaping products. Uh, the e-liquid may or may not contain nicotine. And we have to credit Bill Tarling for this term. I think e-liquid vaping product really describes exactly what we're using, especially now with the heat not burn products that are coming out and calling themselves electronic cigarettes. And I do believe that that term, electronic cigarette, better fits a heat not burn product than it does the products that we're using as well. Yeah, and, and you know, when, when you hear the term like vaping, like vaping could mean a lot of different things, right? I mean, vaping could mean vaping e-liquid, vaping could mean... Um, uh, the, the heat not burn products, vaping could even mean, um, you know, maybe uh, using CBD or maybe using THC. A little ganja. <laughs> well, what's it? Exactly. Yep, yep, yep. Not that we're down on the bud, but um, that's not what we're talking about in this show. Uh -huh, okay? Absolutely. So, okay. All right. Let me move over back to this. And move back to that. And we're going, of course, here. Okay. All right, so I, I added some verbiage to this, this slide. Remember, these, these slides are uh, they're ongoing, they're growing, they're living documents, and these slides are going to be posted with these videos on tasteyourjuice.com. Uh, we started that last week. So uh, although most studies, uh, and we're seeing more and more of them, which is really, really good, uh, conclude that vaping is far safer than smoking, we strongly recommend, here's the disclaimer, guys, if you do neither, continue to do neither. So uh, smoking, that equals bad. Reducing cigarettes through vaping, that equals good. Eliminating cigarettes through vaping, that equals better. Not smoking and not vaping, and you know, not you know, doing heroin or anything like that either. That's the best, right? That equals the best. Now I put another little blurb here. If you see a negative article about vaping, question whether or not that article or that study uh, compares the negative that they're talking about to that of a traditional combustible tobacco cigarette. If it does not, in our opinion, it's invalid. Remember, vaping is harm elimination, or vaping is not, I take that back, vaping is not harm elimination, vaping is harm reduction. Very well said, and I think when we're talking about negative articles as well too, there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's just a lot of bad science, and there's a lot of bad stuff right now that's, you know, I mean, it's, it's just the sign of the times, you know, shocking headlines really, really draw crowds and people click on them and stuff like that. So I, I think it's very, very important, obviously, to look at the science and always, always, but always compare it to a cigarette because this is what we're promoting. We're not promoting initiation of use. Well, if you're an adult and you want to start vaping and nobody can stop you, but we are promoting switching to this product from the existing right. combustible cigarettes. And, um, uh, I just want to bring which, this up. Which, by the way, mm -hmm. which, by the way, is exactly why we call this the Smoker Show, right? Yes. Because that's who we want to talk to. That's who we want to reach. We want to reach those smokers who are looking to get their nicotine, but in a in a safer way, right? By the way, I want to bring this up today because this was kind of a breaking news uh, story uh, where the American Cancer Society uh, changed uh, their position a little bit on electronic cigarettes. And, uh, you know, take this with a grain of salt, okay? Take this as a, a, with a grain of salt because the American Cancer Society is actively lobbying the FDA to ban these products that are on the market. They're, they're actively, uh, you know, working with pharmaceutical companies. And, and, and even in this uh, statement that they put out, there's a lot of bad science in this as well, too. Yeah. But if you are a smoker, if you are a smoker, the only thing that you have to take from this page, and you can find it on cancer.org, is this right here. This line right here. This is the American Cancer Society saying, based on currently available evidence, using current generation e-cigarettes is less harmful than smoking cigarettes. That's all you have oh. to see, because this oh. is this is exactly what we want. This is exactly what we've been saying. We've never we've never said we've never said that you know vaping is completely safe, completely har uh, harmless. It's healthy for you. It's not. If you are smoking right now and you make that transition then you are delivering nicotine to your body in a less harmful way. And this is the only line that you should take from the entire thing because it goes on to tell you that the health effects of long-term use are not known. This is a bullshit line, in my opinion, because we know the health effects of smoking cigarettes, right? So the long-term health effects of smoking cigarettes is death. Right? We know that already. <laughs> so I would rather take the unknown path of a less harmful, as they're calling it right now, based on the scientific evidence that they have, I'd rather take the unknown path of the long term because I know that the other pathway that we're talking about, which is smoking combustible cigarettes, will lead us to death. OK, yeah. so I think it's very, very important. And I was really, really happy to see that uh, at least some 
baby, baby step baby step progress step. has been made. Phil? There, there's another nice little blurb later on in that article where they talk about uh, traditional um, quitting methods or traditional cessation methods. And they say, if none of those work for you, mm -hmm. um, vaping is a, is a viable alternative, which right. is, is another good little blurb in that article. Well, they're going to make sure that they get the money from the patches and the gums and everything else that you're going to buy before you find a good, <laughs> uh, good vaping product that's, gonna, that's going to definitely right. work for you. All right, moving on. All right, so how does it work? And maybe we could go to some of the close-up cams at this point, Dimitri, uh, because you know most of these devices. You want to go to mine? I am working on it right now. Boom! Look at that. Okay. Look at um, that. And now I lose. I, I lose the um, the slide, but we get a uh, we get a close-up of a device. I, I, so I, I can I can kind of cover the, the 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 slide for you. So I will start with number one. Uh, how, you know how do most of these products? work and what it, what is contained in, in the components that, that make up a vaping product. So number one is the power source. This component provides the power to the heating element, which boils the e-liquid, creating the vapor. So go ahead, Phil. All right. So this is going to be a power source. Power sources come in many uh, varieties, many flavors, many shapes, many sizes. Um, but that's all of the, that's all these do. They do it with uh, a number of different features. Some have more features, some have less features. Some have removable batteries, some have built-in batteries, some are boxes like this, some are tubes like this, uh, but they're all basically the same thing. They're power supplies, and they supply power to the heating coil. Number two, the heating element, since you brought up the heating coil. This component accepts power from the power source and heats the e-liquid to the boiling point, creating the vapor. Right, so inside this, uh, what we're calling, we're calling uh, coil heads, uh, there's a little coil of wire all right, so the uh, the device, the power supply, delivers power to that little coil. That little coil heats up to the point where it brings the e-liquid. Uh, we'll put a bottle of e-liquid up here. Um, shameless plug, right? But uh, it heats the e-liquid up to the boiling point. That creates the vapor that you breathe in, and uh, that'll have your nicotine and your flavor and your other um, uh, the, the 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 other satisfactions that come along with vaping. So how do we get that liquid to the wire? Number three is wicking. This is the component that creates the highway, which transfers the e-liquid to the heating element. Right. So inside this coil head, okay, there's going to be some cotton. Uh, the cotton will look uh, something like this, right? Uh, maybe smaller. Uh, it'll wrap around the coil. There's a lot of different ways to get the cotton in the coils. We're going to talk about tanks in a little bit, but um, this is it. This is the highway. Okay. So this highway will take the e-liquid that's in the tank that's surrounding the coil. On the coil, there's going to be these tiny little holes, okay? Uh, the e-liquid soaks into those holes, soaks into the, uh, the wicking material, which surrounds the coil, and that, uh, that's, that's it. That's how the e-liquid gets to that heating coil, and is of, with some kind of wicking material. And, of course, with all uh, vehicles, we need some gas to transport it, which is number four, e-liquid. This is the component that is boiled by the heating element and creates the vapor which you breathe in. Right. Let me move back to the dual cam, and I am going to move on to the next slide. And this is going to bring up something that we want to cover on ep every episode, and of course, that is the myths. We hear a lot about myths about vaping, right, Phil? Yes, um, but you you completely went off script. You see? Oh, I'm sorry. Because if we went on script, originally what we were going to do is we were going to talk about who we are. Now, we've done that before, but we were going to talk about what we did in the past. Where's okay? my document? Uh, there it is. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I worked long and hard to prepare. I'm sorry. Let me move it on this side. For so people... the show. Um, oh. and, and then when we got to the vaping myths debunked, this is right here. This is when we were going to talk about the American Cancer Society. Article. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I, I, well, 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 you know, I'm sorry. So just just make adjustments, buddy. You're a professional. Okay, well, so come back on me, and we'll make some adjustments. All right, I am back on you. Here we go. Boom. Look All at right. that. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. So we'll make some adjustments. Um, hey, Google. No, that's the wrong Hey, Google. Hold, hold on. <laughs> I'm, I'm, having, I'm having nothing but problems with... Yeah, I know you're a little buggy. Okay. Uh, hold on. Hey, Google. Hey, Google. I don't know why. <laughs> it's just so you, 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 you can't make this stuff up. This really is a can't. live show, by the way. You know that, Phil, right? My Google is completely locked right now. Why? Why? <laughs> Unplug why it and plug it back in. Well, I might have to do that. Um, hey, Google. <laughs> oh, hold on. It's coming back. It's coming back. All right, let me try. Let me try again. Let me try one more time. Hey, Google. Is Dimitri a real man? 
Yeah, see? Oh, wow. Wow. That took that took, that took way too long. <laughs> it, it, it did. It took, it really it took, did. It, let, let's try it. Should we try another one? Should we All ask right, Google let's try, another let's try, one? Let's try one more. Okay, let's try one more. Um, Hey, Google. What does Dimitri like to do for fun? <laughs> my other one. My, hold on. My other one is answering right now. Hold on a second. Let's. What, what let, a disaster. <laughs> it's, it's a complete disaster. Let, let's see if we can get this one. Shh, shh, shh. Hey, Google, what does Dimitri like to do for fun? For fun, Dimitri likes to spread tzatziki sauce on his body and run naked through the park. Yeah. Oh, wow. I actually like to do that. I really do. <laughs> you can get arrested in, in some states doing that, though, from what I understand. Uh, if, if, everybody's phone is making a Google search now that it's listening to, by the way. So... <laughs> All right, so now that you went uh, completely off script, um, so we're, we're not going to go through the vaping myths already because we went through the vaping myths and we did the uh, the American Cancer Society post. Okay, so, uh, I, you know, I want to I want to do a, to take a little break here because we did talk about ourselves in the previous episode and I do want to get a little, um, you know, footnote inside there as well, too. Um, we, we talked a little bit yesterday, yeah, I mean, the last episode about, you know, how long we smoked and when we transitioned, but let's talk about our journey for the last eight, nine years of vaping in too. And I think that's something a lot of people will be interested, especially smokers that are just transitioning now to kind yeah. of see where they can possibly be eight, eight, nine years down the line. So it's, it's interesting because um, years ago at, at a Vegas show that we did together, uh, I did a presentation on, um, it was kind of like, you know, our journey, our journey through vaping. It was some history of vaping. And we're going to do uh, some nostalgia stuff here tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about the history of vaping. Um, but see, I, I like to call them exits. I like to call them exits. Um, w when we started vaping, I started vaping in 2009, there were very, very limited choices. So you kind of had to go with the, the limited choices that you had. And then as vaping progressed and as vaping grew and matured, uh, a lot more choices became available to us. So somebody who's starting now is going to be uh, kind of overwhelmed with the amount of product, the amount of styles, the, all of the acronyms, um, everything, all the baggage that vaping comes along with uh, now, right? But my my first electronic cigarette, and we're gonna we're gonna bring this out on a show here in the future too, was the uh, the Joy 510. I went from the Joy 510 to uh, kind of an Ego uh, battery with a, a cardamizer. I went from cardamizers to cardo tanks. Uh, I started uh, playing around with uh, adjustability uh, with the uh, the Buzz Pro, and I think right there. Maybe we should we could we could talk a little bit about the uh, the Buzz Pro. Dimitri, do you have uh, some slides for the Buzz the Buzz Pro? I sure do. <laughs> oh, look at that. that! Look at that segue. So um, the uh, the 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 e -cig, oh, uh, Can you slow down a little bit there? Well, I, I mean, it's, I mean it's, could, you, it's, could you go any could you go any faster? Could you? It's, could you, it's can, doing it by itself. It's in a slide it pattern. Itself. Hold on, okay, let me so can't, let me uh, slow it down. So, hold on, let me slow it down. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let me go. I'll go to twelve seconds. Is that slow enough for you? There you go. That's pretty good because, you know, it's interesting because that's a, a, some of my progression there. Uh, that first device there to the left is going to be uh, the old Ego battery. There's no adjustments on that. It's not an Ego twist or anything. Uh, and then we move into the uh, some of the, the the early Smoke Tech products. I don't even remember those, um, but they uh, they had some they had removable batteries. Uh, but then we go to the Buzz Pro, and the Buzz Pro is the blue one all the way on the right. Mm -hmm. And that really was one of the very first um, adjustable devices, okay? So there was no screen on that device. There was no, there was no, you know, no numbers, no nothing. There was just that little dial that you saw. And that little dial that you're looking at right now had three levels. It had a green level, it had a yellow level, and then it had a red level. So it was basically like the volume control on your radio, uh, which everybody understands, right? As you turn the volume up, you get more power, you get more volume. And that's exactly how that device worked. Um, and back then, uh, you know, we're, we're not adjusting in watts, we're not adjusting in volts. With that device, we're not adjusting in anything other than using that dial. So there's no confusion, there's no numbers, there's no resistance, there's nothing. You push the button, you screw your, your, your tank on the top of it, or your device, or whatever it was you're using. You adjust your dial, you push your button, and you have your vape. And then we kind of went to the days of the Proveri. Right, and I think you've got um, a Proveri there that we can show people. There, I Dean? sure do. Let me get my camera set up here as well, too, because I had to turn on the lights. And uh, boom, look at that. Mm. Look at that. 
Look at that. There Studio. it is. There's the Preveri, and actually, this is an 18350 mode. This is one of the first um, variable voltage devices, and it was it was uh, really the awe moment for all of us of vapors. I mean, it's something that we we look forward to to getting. Actually, I got my first Preveri in 2011 for Father's Day for my wife, and you know, I thought I was in heaven. I thought it was the best thing since sliced bread. And to be fair, the first Proveri that I got in 2011 still works to today. So that's just saying a lot about the products that Probate put out. Yeah. Now that uh, that device there, Dimitri, that that's um, do, can you light it up? Do you have a battery to light it up? I sure can. But you know, I, I was trying to find the extender for it, and I couldn't find it. So I actually have to use the extender from uh, a, a, a a newer Proveri. But I'm gonna put an 18. I do have an 18350, and this is the battery that that actually you'd put into the Proveri. <laughs> It's a very, very tiny 18350 battery, but this one is dead. I haven't used that 18350 in so long. And the, the 18350 would be for the Proveri Mini. Uh, you have a full size there with an extension on it now. And I that's do. not even the oldest Proveri. I can tell by the uh, the, the, the grip uh, that it's a little well, bit different. I don't have a nipple top battery either to, to light this thing up, but there it oh, is. Oh, you don't? It, okay. No, but uh, this is an 18650 mode as it is right now with a big battery inside. And a very, very simple screen with just numbers, and you basically adjust your voltage from 3.2 all the way up to 4.7, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Hey, Dimitri, we'll improvise. Sure. We'll improvise. Go back to my camera, because there is a device that recently came out called the V from Dovepo, mm -hmm. okay? And that is what the screen looks like on the V. Mm -hmm. And the V actually adjusts in voltage, not wattage, okay? So believe it or not, even though this is a brand new product, that is very, very similar to the screen that Absolutely. you would see on the Proveri. Mm -hmm. okay. See, that was that was pretty good improvisation. That was that was that was really really fantastic. But you know, when, when when we're talking about stuff like this, that's it. I mean, it looks like it's kind of the history. But this honestly was a game changer for a lot of people. The fact that we could actually take uh, a cartomizer at the time or whatever we were using and adjust the voltage. And then have a consistent vape because if you did not have that adjustment, your battery would start to sag out. It would start to diminish, and then as your battery diminished, then your vape would diminish as well too. So this was this was a huge moment, I think, in vaping history. The fact that we could adjust, you know, the way that we're that we're able to vape. It was, and you know, it wasn't easy to adjust. Uh, you know, there were a bu bunch of uh, button presses that you had to do to get it to adjust. Well, definitely, I, I see. Unfortunately, in Florida, I don't have. One to show you. I have a bunch of them in Rochester. I didn't take any with me, but uh, eventually we'll show you it adjust in, in another, like, you know, uh, little history of, mm -hmm. of vaping section. But um, I always say that depending on how long you were a vapor, you probably had a love affair uh, with Pro Vape and Pro Vary at some point. It was one of the most desirable pieces out there. Now it's a little bit different because there's so many devices out there. Back then, fewer devices, and the, the Pro Vary was definitely, uh, like Dimitri said, a game changer and a very, very desirable uh, PV. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And, and you know, going back to my uh, to my journey as well, too, you know, I, I kind of started, like, with you with a stick battery, and then I moved on, uh, you know, to tanks and stuff like that. But, however, I, had, I was different from you in the aspect that you used a lot of cartomizer tanks. I did a lot of dripping. I was doing dripping before dripping was cool. And dripping was much, much different than what we see it now. This is actually one of the setups that I actually use. It has a little dripping atomizer inside. This is on just an Ego battery. And you're going to see inside it's got a little atomizer with a little bridge. And all you could just put is one or two drops inside there before it floods. You put your little cone. Just put a little drops down there in the middle. Then put your drip tip on top. And then just take a little puff and start to vape. Now, would that would that atomizer be an HH three fifty seven, Dimitri? This is not, but I eventually I started using HH three fifty sevens because I really really liked them. But this was one of the first with a bridge on it, and the reason why I started to use this, the flavor was just amazing to me, and I could not go back to a Cardo once I discovered that flavor. So again, we talk about vaping being trade offs in the first couple of episodes. This is another trade off. I right. rather drip every you know two three drops every th third or second uh, fourth puff to compensate for the flavor that I was receiving. So this right. is, and, this was, and, and for me, it was about convenience and mm -hmm. ease of use mm -hmm. and not having to think about dripping. So that's why Cardo tanks work really, really well for me. I, right? to I totally, I totally agree. Okay. So then, so all of this while we're adjusting in voltage. Okay. And then uh, a company came along by the name of Evolve mm -hmm. and changed everything that we were doing, mm -hmm. everything that we were doing. And they did it with this device here. So let's take a close up of this device. All right, let me move on to your feels close up. There you go. 
And there it is, the Darwin, ladies and gentlemen. This is an actual working Darwin, okay? And uh, here's the uh, the 510 connection, and the 510 connection kind of rotated up like this. A lot of people think this looks like a, a tire gauge. I think the meat, uh, or uh, Grim Green called this a tire gauge. You can see how ridiculous this would look with a modern day tank on it. So let's go ahead and screw a modern day tank on it. It would look something like that, okay? Uh, and you obviously don't have the, the ability to fold this down anymore. This really was designed for those, uh, those smaller atomizers that Dimitri was just using earlier. Mm -hmm. Now, if we take another look at this, let's take a look at the screen right there. I, I hope you can see the screen. It's right now set for 4.2 watts, watts. I'm going to go ahead and crank this up to its maximum now. All right, hang on. There's a little dial here on the side. I'm going to rotate this dial to its maximum wattage of 12.7 wow. watts. Wow, living on the edge. 12.7 watts. But this is really the device that changed how we do things. This changed from us adjusting in voltage to us adjusting in wattage. Yeah. And a big shout out uh, to uh, Mike Vapes is in the chat as well, too. Thanks for hanging out. And uh, guys, you know, all, uh, all the people that you see in the chat, DJ LSB Vapes, Mike Vapes, they all have YouTube channels. Uh, please subscribe to them and check it out. They have a lot, a lot of stuff that you can uh, watch on there, too, as you're going through your vaping journey. Go ahead, Phil. Yes. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, DJ LED is probably watching this going, you know, I could do a much better job with the lighting and with the other uh, cameras. <laughs> probably does. With it. Yeah, I'm sure he is. Pro I'm probably sure he does. Is. But, you know, I mean, it, it, again, this, the, the, the point of our journey as well, too, is to kind of see the stuff that we were using in the past and we didn't give up. I mean, there was a lot of lot of challenges in our vaping journey, but we know that vaping is better for us. We felt it in our health. We felt it in our lives in our everyday lives and our families. So we didn't give up. Even though we had challenges back then, we did that trade-off thing to be able to continue to vape and enjoy that and obviously not go back to cigarettes. Right. So, you know, one of the questions is, is why wattage? Why did we go from, from voltage to, to wattage? Um, I think in the early days, in the days of devices like the Darwin, uh, there's really no such thing as sub-ohming, guys. Uh, I think your choices were 2 ohms, 1.5 ohms, and maybe, maybe 1 ohm, okay? And I think the goal with this device when we're adjusting in wattage is to have one wattage where you can change your the, the atomizer's resistance, you can change what you're using on here and get a similar experience without having to adjust all the time, mm -hmm. right? I, I, wouldn't you say that was the reason, the primary reason for wattage back in the day? Yeah. He's completely ignoring me. He's I'm sorry. Watching, I was I was watching the chat. I'm sorry. He's watching the chat, completely ignoring me. But now today, even today, like adjusting in wattage, it does make more sense, okay? Because I I, I prepared some numbers for for us, Dimitri. Oh, I didn't do any charts, wow. but I have some numbers here. So let me give you an example here. Uh, you are vaping. Uh, you're vaping direct lung, and you're sub ohming, and you're vaping. Uh, a 0.3 ohm atomizer, a 0.3 ohm atomizer, kind of low, and you're vaping that at 60 watts, okay? You're vaping at 4.2 volts. Now, I'm vaping a 1.5 ohm atomizer, and I'm vaping that at not 60 watts, but a much, much lower 15 watts, okay? I'm vaping at 4.7 volts, 4.7 volts. So it almost looks like I'm applying more power. I'm applying more voltage, right? So, so volts really don't tell the whole story. Wattage is a, is a better way to, to communicate uh, the, the amount of power that's going to the coil. Because if we were still adjusting in volts, we probably wouldn't be having like wattage wars, the, 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 the war to get the highest wattage. We would probably be having amp wars right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Right? The, right? That, that yeah, would be I, I agree. I, I did a video on this many, many, many years ago. I think it's still up on my channel. But uh, I was trying to explain the difference between voltage and wattage. And I think that the simplest way that I can explain it is if you're, if you're driving a car and you're trying to adjust the speed, right? So you're hitting the gas pedal up and down until, you know, sometimes you have a, you have a heel, you have to hit the, you know, the gas pedal a bit more. Sometimes you have to let it go. That is adjusting voltage as you go along. Once you find the heat that you want, it's like setting your car in cruise control. So if you have cruise control in your car and you set it for 60, then it's automatically going to get you to 60 and it's going to maintain it there. And I think that's what wattage is. Once you find your heat, voltage don't matter. You set your wattage and then the device itself will adjust the voltage to get you the heat that you want on your atomizer. So a manual, let's say, accelerator versus an, a, a cruise control on the car is the easiest, more layman's term that I can explain the difference between the two. Now, right. 
why do we have both on devices? Well, that's a great question. I personally don't see the, the, the reason for it, but the, it, it, it's just another step to confuse, especially new vapors that are out there. So it doesn't really make a difference if you're vaping in volts or if you're vaping in wattage once you find that number. Okay, the device is going to do it for you. Wattage is just a more simpler way to get your desired heat out of your atomizer. Yeah. Bottom line, I mean, you, you could think of you could think of volts, you could think of watch, you could think of all of this, all of this as just it's a volume control. OK, it's it's a way to send more power to the coil. Uh, so how much power does your coil require? That all depends on the resistance of the coil. Right. A lot of the coils at this point, uh, the pre-built uh, coil heads anyway, come with um, wattage ranges. Right. Specified mm -hmm. wattage ranges. Mm -hmm. And I always say the same thing to folks is I say, start low, right? Try your vape, start adjusting up. When you're satisfied, stop. Uh, if you start to get burnt flavor, if uh, you're either not wicking properly or you've adjusted too high, right? Yeah, yeah. and, and I, I'm, I'm liking the trend, uh, you know, with, with putting the wattage on the coils uh, now that you're using, it gives you a little range of stuff that you can start, at least if, even if you're new, you can actually look at what the recommended wattage of that specific coil is that you're gonna put inside your tank. Of course, you're going to run into issues depending on which coil you're using, which coil head you're using, which uh, tank that you're using that we're going to talk about in a little bit. You know, if you're using a coil that might have really, really small uh, liquid ports on it, if you're mm -hmm. using a higher VG, we've talked about the e-liquids and the uh, the PG-VG ratios. Right. If you're using a higher VG, it's going to have a harder time getting in to those little holes, right? If you're using a thinner liquid, it's gonna have an easier time getting into those holes. So these are some of the challenges that you have with vaping. If you have a liquid that is too thick and it's not feeding, uh, th that could be one of the problems, right? Yep, uh, absolutely. If you're having a, a liquid, if you're, you know, you're using a coil head or a tank and your liquid is too thin, maybe it's leaking or it's gurgling. So, you know, you really kind of have to adjust sometimes, depending on what you're using, the kind of liquid for the kind of tank that you're using. I do want to bring up a couple of questions from the chat before we get into the tanks segment. And uh, thanks to our moderator, Bill, for pointing these out to me. These are very, very valid questions that I'd like to have us answered. This question is coming from Yus808. Hi, guys. I am new to vaping and have been given a Hammer of God mod. <laughs> My question is, what is the best tank for it and why? Um, you know, the Hammer of God mod is a little bit of overkill, in my opinion, and I think Phil will agree for a new vapor. Um, however, that doesn't mean that you cannot use a starter tank on it. I think a lot of people uh, mistake that if you have a device that has three batteries on it, has a lot of power, you can't use it for lower wattage tanks. And, you know, that's, that's just not the case. In fact, you're going to get great battery life if you're vaping at very, very low wattage with something like that. So since you do have the Hammer of God, this is what they gave you. You know, I would suggest a starter tank. You know, the two, obviously, that we recommend so far, if you were mouth-to-lung vapor, if you want to have that same experience as vaping, is the tank that me and Phil designed, the Zenith, and, of course, the Aspire Nautilus. These are the two starter tanks that have been, you know, the true, tried, and tested, and, and I think that will give you the best experience if you're looking for the mouth-to-lung, you know, the same draw that you do on a cigarette. So pull the vapor into your mouth and then inhale it into your lungs and then exhale it. If you're looking for a more direct lung, a sub -ohm experience, there's a lot of tanks out there, <laughs> hundreds of sub -ohm tanks out there. But one of the ones that I recommend a lot is the Super Tank. I think the Super Tank by Tobacco is a, the most underrated sub -ohm tank on the market. It's inexpensive. The 0.5 ohm coils can give you a little bit more of a restricted uh, lung draw as well, too, a little bit more flavorful. And it's cheap, right? So you know, just because something costs $50, $60 doesn't mean it's the best sub -ohm tank out there. So those are the two sub tanks, or those those are the two tanks, or so three tanks that I would suggest while you're starting. Anything that you want to add on that, Phil? What you said. I'm sorry. I Fantastic. Was That's okay. That's okay. I caught you where you were swallowing. Here's another question from Russell Wood. I do have a question, and I'm a transitioning smoker. I need to know if I can use nicotine salt liquid in the area at one ohm, and what wattage range I should be in. I also can uh, can I use alcohol on my tank? Uh, well, I'll answer the first question. And I'll let you answer the second question, Phil. Uh, yes, you can use salt nicotine at the areas of one ohm, you know, start at 14 watts and work your way up all the way to 20, depending on how hot you want the vapor to be. But uh, using uh, nicotine salts at one ohm is absolutely uh, no issues whatsoever. Um, yeah, just, just keep in mind when it comes to nicotine salts, nicotine salts, they're going to be smoother, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and they're typically going to be higher nicotine levels, right? Now, your body should self-titrate. Your body should let you know when you have enough nicotine, right? So if you're feeling jittery, if you're feeling shaky, if you're not feeling right, back off a little bit, please, yeah. okay? Um, just want to make that disclaimer there. 
Yeah, and uh, the Hammer of God is a, it's a it is a regular device. I'm seeing some comments in the chat. It is, isn't it? The Hammer of God. Um, I have never had a Hammer of God. I, I, th I thought it was a I thought it was one of those that had the screen on it and took like three batteries or whatever. But if if it's not a regulated mod, I definitely should think you should just put it to the side and can find something else yeah. that's out there. Yeah, we, we definitely, okay, so, the, you know, there's 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 different kinds of mods. There's regulated mods, uh, there's uh, there's unregulated mods, and then there's mechanical mods, right? I like to actually have those three distinctions because yeah. a mod can have electronics, mm -hmm. a mod can, can have built-in safety and built-in protection, yeah. but it could also be unregulated. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, a good example of that is a device that has a bypass mode, okay? Because at that point, it becomes unregulated. You're just vaping off of the battery, right? Mm -hmm. And your vape experience is going to change as that battery starts to drain. Mm -hmm. Now, that device is still going to have uh, reverse battery protection. It's still going to have short circuit protection. It's still going to have low resistance protection, right? Um, but it's not regulated. Now, there are other devices, most devices uh, that have built-in electronics are regulated. What that means is that the amount of power that goes to your coil is going to be consistent through the course of the battery charge. Okay, so you're going to mm -hmm. get the same vape on a full battery as you would a dead battery, or no, yeah. not a dead battery, but a very, very low battery, mm -hmm. right? Then we go into the world of mechanicals. Now, mechanicals are just, for the most part, metal tubes. They're metal tubes with contacts, okay? And you're vaping off the battery, so it's unregulated, but the problem there is that there's no built-in protection, okay? So there's no reverse battery protection, there's no short circuit protection, there's no low resistance protection. All of the protection is in your hands, okay? So you have to know how to use that device and how to use it properly and safely. That's why mechanicals, although it might be something that you want to get into, it is certainly not something that I would recommend for a new beginning vapor. Yeah, and everybody's saying that the hammer of God is mech, so if that's what uh, the case is, uh, don't use it. Just get your new setup. Get your, get your new uh, setup altogether. Try to get some regulated vaping into your life. I thought, you remember that first battery mod with the two batteries that came out from, I thought that was a hammer of God that had a screen on the side. It was huge. It looked like a brick. I thought that's what it was. But in any case, if that's not the case, yeah, if it's a mechanical mod, as Phil just explained, it's not a good idea. Also, I want to add to this question that was given to us by um, um, Russell Wood 72 on the salts. Keep in mind that before salts were introduced, we were telling people to vape as much as their body needed. Okay, so when you're vaping 6 milligram, 12 milligram regular nicotine, if you desire a cigarette, just keep on vaping. It's, there's nothing wrong with it because there's not a beginning and an end to vaping. But when you're using salts, you really have to be careful. You cannot use high milligram salts in the same fashion. And I know that because I've been testing it a lot for the last month. You know, I can last with two, three mils of liquid if nicotine salts in a Zenith tank or something like that all day. It's satisfying to me. I get enough nicotine. However, if I was using my 6 milligram or my 12 milligram nicotine, I obviously would vape more. So keep on mind on that. And then last question on that is, can I use alcohol on my tank, uh, Phil? Can you use alcohol on your mm -hmm. tank to clean it? Is that the question? I'm, I'm assuming that's it, yeah. Yeah, uh, absolutely you can. Uh, you can you can use alcohol to, on the uh, the tank to clean it. Just make sure you, uh, you rinse it underwater uh, after you're all done. Yeah. Should be no problem. I use a uh, very, very cheap vodka as well, too. That's another thing. That I would just put a little bit of vodka with warm water in my mm -hmm. Sonic cleaner, and that cleans it as well, too. I get this gallon of vodka for like 11 bucks. I mean, I don't know what kind of, what kind of vodka it is. But in any case, uh, all right, moving along, uh, we have a segment set up on tanks. Is that where we're going now? Is that correct? I think that's what we should talk about now is tanks. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm on the, I'm on the, I'm on the right uh, you know, uh, spot. So here we are. Um, are you want me to start uh, reading and you want to show or do you want to start? Uh, we, I think we could both do it. I think we could both do it. We could, okay. we could probably even come off the slides right now and just talk about uh, styles first. Okay, let's talk about the styles of vaping. Of course, okay. there are three, right? I would say that there are three main styles of vaping right mm -hmm. now. There's going to be your mouth to lung. There's going to be your direct lung. And, of course, there's going to be a mixture of the both of those, which we would call restricted direct lung. Now, vaping has become a world of acronym hell. Uh, you, you know, I always thought when I was in uh, corporate America and I left corporate America and I got into vaping that there would be no more acronyms. Uh, that is absolutely not the case. Uh, there are plenty of acronyms uh, in vaping mm -hmm. that, that you're going to hear. You're going to hear yeah. about. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we made these slides, and they're available on tasterjuice.com, uh, because you can, you can see some of these acronyms and understand what they mean. So we have three acronyms that we're going to start off with is MTL, DL, and RDL, all mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So MTL is mouth-to-lung, and that is um, 
a tighter draw, if you will, a tighter draw, and it's also a style of vaping. Uh, it's typically what 99.9% .9 of smokers uh, do, and when I say smokers, I'm talking about traditional tobacco cigarettes, not the funny-looking cigarettes, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what you do is you use your cheeks and your mouth to bring the, uh, the vapor into your mouth like that, and then once the vapor's in your mouth, you take it into your lungs. So okay? I'm going to I'm going to demonstrate for you right now. I feel like talking. Uh -huh. sure so so I'm going to take the vapor and I'm going to yes, put it in my mouth. Right. Yep. Very is similar to a cigarette. Is that sexy? One more yeah, time. It was un it, not only was it sexy, but it's even sexier because my photo is actually over your nipple right now. On, on the shirt. <laughs> it really is. Look at it really is. Oh, my no, right the nipple. Other side, the other side. Yeah. All right. So yeah, that is that is what we consider mouth to lung vaping. Actually taking the vapor into your mouth, just like you would possibly do with a cigarette, and then inhale it into your lungs, and then exhale either through your nose or through your mouth. Now we go to direct lung, and I don't mm -hmm. even think I have anything in here. I've got something here. set up. Don't worry. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do, um, because I am not much of a, a direct lung mm -hmm. uh, vapor, if if at all, a direct lung vapor. Okay, mm -hmm. but direct lunging is is you're you're breathing in, and you're bringing the vapor from the atomizer from your device directly into your lung. So there's mm -hmm. no there's no mouth portion to this. It's just a Directly into your lungs. Dim Correct. You I'm going to demonstrate. And this is also, uh, you know, you might be familiar with it if you've ever hit a bong in your life. But yes, uh, yes. here I have a, 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 a sub ohm tank, and uh, I'm going to take the vapor directly into my lungs, bypassing my mouth. Yes. And then I'm going to exhale. Yes. Oh, very very nice. Right. That was very, very nice. Got to do it again because I, I can't get enough of this. Look at that. Okay. And also, you will notice that when you're doing that, it's, it's, it's a little bit more loud. And the reason being that is when you, when you do that, it has a lot of heat on the coil. You need a lot of airflow in, in order to be able to do that direct lung inhale. And that's why a lot of these sub ohm atomizers, you do, they're a little bit more louder than a, you know, a, a simple mouth to lung atomizer. Right. And I guess we could say that another name for direct lung is, is maybe even uh, volume vaping. Now, some mm -hmm. people take shorter direct lungs than others. Sure. Uh, but typically, when you are direct lunging, you are getting a larger volume of vapor into your lungs. That also comes along with more exposure uh, of your lungs to the, uh, to the vapor, right? Yeah. Okay, and then there's like there's different styles within those two styles, mm -hmm. right? So there's we, we can say RDL or restricted direct lung. That's kind of a that's like a direct lung, but it's a tighter draw. So you're still taking it directly into your lungs, but it's a little bit tighter. And some people like that. Some people also do combinations, right? Some people will do a mouth to lung followed by a little bit of a direct lung. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a lot of different styles. There's a lot of different ways. What's the correct way? There is no correct way. The only correct way is your way. It's what you're most comfortable doing. Correct. But just keep in mind that if you are a beginning vapor, right, coming into vaping, the most the most similar experience that you will find to smoking a cigarette would be the mouth to lung style. And we're seeing a lot of mouth to lung printed now on the boxes. Sometimes it is accurate, sometimes it's not accurate, but it's just something that you're going to have to experience. That's why it's really good to go to a vape shop. Here I have the Zenith with all five holes open, and you can actually restrict down um, direct lung uh, this atomizer as well too. So all five holes are open, and you know, you, you're you going to see that the volume of vapor is not going to be as big as a direct lung, but you can actually do it. That that wasn't as sexy as your first two. I'm it was it, it wasn't. I'm gonna work on it. <laughs> I wasn't I, I wasn't satisfied like I'm I was sorry. satisfied with your first two. I'm sorry. I, I I'm wasn't. Sorry. Okay. But um, also understand when we talk about these tanks. Okay, there are definitely tanks that are designed specifically for mouth to lung. There are tanks that are designed specifically for direct lung. There are tanks that span the different styles of vaping. There are tanks that you can get a good mouth to lung and get a little bit of a restricted. Sure. There are tanks where you can get a good direct lung and maybe get a little bit of restricted. Mm -hmm. There are very few tanks out there that will do really, really good mouth to lung and really, really good direct lung because a lot of that stuff has to do with the airflow and things going on within the tank and how the air hits the coil, et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely. Uh, also on the MTL um, uh, draw, there is a looser and a tighter draw. There's people that really like to have a very, very tight MTL draw, which means you're actually sucking your cheeks in when you're sucking on the atomizer. 
And there's a looser MTL draw as well, too. They're both correct, depending on what your style is and what you like. What I've noticed myself as my vaping journey has progressed, I like a looser MTL draw now versus what we were using in early 2011, 2012, where the draw was very, very tight. I mean, we're talking about some air holes on these atomizers that are very, very tiny. So as my vaping journey has progressed, I have enjoyed a more looser MTL draw. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting, Dimitri, that you say that because um, probably before the Siren 1 came along, I was a much tighter mouth-to-lung mm -hmm. style vapor, right? Mm -hmm. And then the Siren 1 came along, and I liked how easy that tank was to use. I liked how easy that tank was to build and how easy that tank was to work with, um, but it didn't get as tight as I liked it to. Um, so I just kind of dealt with it. I just kind of dealt with it. And I, I found myself liking a little bit of a looser mouth to lung draw that, that kind of started with that tank. Right. Yeah. 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 I, I agree with you also, you know, for me, what I, you know, the, it, it's a, the style of vaping as well too. You know, I'm a three, four puff kind of guy as well too. So I like a little bit looser because I can, you know, take the vapor into my mouth uh, and I'll, I'll demonstrate for you one more time. How about that? Oh, here we go. Make, make it easier for you. Yeah. So I, I this is, this is the way that I enjoy to vape. And I actually yeah. like to do three puffs and exhale through my nose. And then the last one, I like to exhale it through my mouth. Yeah. Oh, oh very nice. Yep. I do. I do notice you do that. Yes. So, <laughs> that was, so yeah, it's, it, there's different styles in anything that's vaping. Nothing right. is wrong. What suits you better and keeps you off cigarettes is the best one. That's actually very similar to even we, we even vape uh, very, very similar. We so do. like I, I, when I typically vape, it's, Some people might call those pre puffs. Some, you know, I, yeah. I don't know what you call them, but that's that's really primer kind of puffs. Vape. Maybe I thought I saw primer Rip puffs. Tripper's video on the Aries, and he said it was a primer puff type vape. Again, it does. There's no really accurate terminology. It's just whatever works best for you. It really is. Right. Absolutely. So now let's talk about filling. Should we talk about filling? Yes. Let's talk about filling tanks. That okay. is that is something that uh, that a lot of people are uh, would want to know. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna go ahead and flip my pa paper over here. So there's a lot of different ways that we can fill these tanks with e-liquid. Of course, we are talking about a certain kind of tank at this point. We're not talking about a dripper because a dripper or a squonker is some, something completely different. But so we have a, uh, a tank that we can do a top fill on, okay? What does top fill mean? Top fill means that I don't have to unscrew my tank from the device, okay? All I have to do is there's some way I can open the top of the tank, okay? In the case of the Zenith, it's just a rotate and that opens up a, a fill port right up here. Fill port, that's like me, right? A uh, fill port, and we put our e-liquid into the top of the tank, and then we close it again. So that's one style. Another style that we can take a look at is, oh, I don't know. How about a K-Fun, Dimitri? Uh, sure. A K-Fun is, is another one. A K-Fun. Now, the K-Fun a little bit different here because we do have to first close the liquid flow, okay? And we'll talk about that in a second. And then we would open up the, the top. We would fill it from the top again. We would close it. And then we would open up our liquid flow again. Okay. Now, why, Dimitri? Why do we open and close liquid flow when we're top filling? Well, we, you know, we have we have the issue of pressure, right? All these tanks have uh, build up pressure inside. This is basically how they work. So, as you're vaping, that pressure that's built them forces the e-liquid down into your coil, so you can keep that nice, delicious vapor into your mouth. So, every time that you're going to open up the tank, you break that pressure seal. So, when you do that, the liquid automatically wants to rush inside the feeding ports of your replaceable coil head or whatever uh, system else that you have feeding your tank. So what happens then is that when you put everything back together and you seal your tank, your liquid has already gone into the coil and you get that gurgling sensation, you get a flooding, you might even get hot liquid in your mouth. And that's not a very, very enjoyable experience. Actually, Dimitri quite likes the hot liquid in his mouth. <laughs> Moving on. Not yours. Um, so yeah, that's that's one of the uh, that's one of the the biggest challenges mm -hmm. where, when it comes to top filling because when you unscrew that top, you're releasing pressure, so the e-liquid naturally by by just gravity wants to force its way into the uh, the coil head. The other problem is on some designs when you screw that top back on, okay, unless there's some kind of a pressure relief system on the tank, as you screw the top back on or you put the top back on, no matter uh, how it's designed you're creating additional pressure that's forcing e-liquid into that, that coil uh, again, right? So those are some of the challenges that you're going to get with, with top fill designs is that you could have some gurgling, some extra liquid um, in that coil or in the chamber that you kind of have to either, you either vape through it 
Okay, it'll get used as you vape. Uh, there's a couple other things that we could do if I had some paper towel here with me. Um, to clear a chamber, you never want to blow down into the tank, okay? Because if I were to start blowing right now, all I'm doing is I'm forcing more e-liquid into that coil, okay? So what you have to do is you have to blow up, right? So if I get some vapor towel here. Those shorts are so sexy, by the way. I mean, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. So if I get some, I, see, I like to call this vapor towel, not paper towel. And what I would do is I would open up my airflow, okay? I would put the vapor towel around the tank and blow up. Mm, so okay? Hot. And now I'm not pushing the button when I'm doing that, mm -hmm. but I'm blowing up. And what you're, what you're doing is, by doing that, you're forcing air, okay, into the chamber, and you're keeping the liquid out of it. That's why you're holding it upside down, mm -hmm. right? And that will typically clear a chamber if your mm -hmm. chamber is, is gurgly, okay, yeah. if your tank is gurgly. The other thing you could do is, I like to call this the, uh, the power of Christ compels you, do this thing. Don't do it inside because you'll get <laughs> liquid all over the place. But if you do this, right, but do it outside, that'll clear a chamber as well. So there are ways you can work around that gurgliness that you might get from a top fill or from any tank. Mm -hmm. yeah, if okay. you're speaking of filling, there's also the bottom fill. Most of the tanks are kind of transitioning for that. But one of the most popular tanks, the Aspire, the original Aspire Nautilus, oh. uh, or the Kabuki, oh, okay. as you have there as well, too, is a bottom fill uh, system. Yeah, so a bottom fill, now that's going to require you to take the tank off of your device, okay? So now I have my tank off of my device. I have to hold my tank upside down, okay? And then I unscrew the bottom. And then I fill it up to the top of the, the shaft, if you will, okay? The shaft, once it's full, I go ahead and replace the bottom. I tighten it back up. And now I could rotate that around again and I could screw it back onto my device. Now the, 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 with most things vaping, there's positives and negatives. Okay. So the positive here is by bottom filling, you don't flood, nothing floods. It really can't flood if you're doing uh, bottom filling. Uh, the negative here is that your tank does have to come off device to get it to fill. Right. Yeah. It is a little bit troublesome, but it's something that, again, we traded off, uh, you know, all these years. And I think, uh, just like everything in vaping, uh, a good trade off is, uh, it's, that's what it's all about. <laughs> what are you going right. to find? What, it, what you enjoy your vape? Right now. Um, and, and when we talk about top fill, top fill could be like a lot of different things. Uh, top fill can be, you unscrew the top, uh, top fill could be half turn, pull off the top. Mm -hmm. Top fill can be, uh, do sliding, I have sliding like mm -hmm. the Aries, right? So the Aries has a slide. I can get that to work. There we go. So that has a slide. You slide it open and there's a fill port. Uh, some tanks have a, like a rotating top. Some tanks have a hinge top. Mm -hmm. All of those would qualify as top fill tanks, right? Yeah. One, one of the nice ones um, that I have seen, this is the new Heracles tank by uh, Sense. This is a sub ohm tank, mm -hmm. but you basically just turn it and it opens up just like that. And you fill the tank from the top. You see the two fill ports there. And then you just push down and then just twist it and it's locked into place as well too so there's another side another uh version of top fill yep so there's lots of different kinds but they all fall under the category of top fill now mm -hmm. some tanks have side fill too so there's something that you would rotate or something you would turn and a little port on the side would open up and mm -hmm. you could put your e-liquid in on the side um but i think for the most part those are the three ways that you would get your e-liquid into most of the tanks. But now we have to talk about dripping and we have to talk about bottom feeding as well. Yeah, so I have I have a dripper here. This is, uh, believe it or not, the Quasar. It's a four-year-old atomizer, but I, I really still enjoy it for some reason. I like the really, really tight chamber that it has in there. It gives a good restricted sub-ohm look. So you see that my coils are exposed with a cotton. So there's two ways usually that people will drip. Uh, let me just use some of your liquid here. Yeah. Um, so basically, you can just paint the coils, and I mean, just taking a little bit of liquid and just painting the coils, putting a little bit of liquid, make sure everything is saturated. Or with the cap on, you can also do the same thing. Let me put the cap on. Just take a few drops and put it right down through the middle of the mouthpiece. And I'm sure I'm flooding this now, but that's okay. But that's, that's another way of dripping into your R RDA atomizer, and then just you know having an enjoyable vape. So Dimitri just demonstrated dripping, right? So that that is what like if you've heard dripping, if you if you think it's like this really like this negative thing, like like people are freebasing uh, nicotine and and it, you know because there were a couple articles that came out that made drippers look like drug addicts. Mm -hmm. It's actually completely completely false. Okay, all dripping is is manually 
doing what a tank does automatically. That's all it yeah. is. That's all it is. You're dripping e-liquid directly onto the coil, directly onto your wicking material. That's all it is. Okay. Yes, absolutely. All right. Now, there's also what we call squonking. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I have a, a squonk box up here I can show you. Yep. I'm sure you have a couple too. So this is a, uh, a squonking device. All right. Uh, what squonks are? All right. These are regulated devices. Some of them are adjustable. Some of them are mechanical. So all, all different kinds. But for the most part, they all have a bottle inside of them. Okay. And that bottle goes up to the 510 connection. So there's a little tube, little tube on the bottle. You can see that right there. Right. Dimitri, we could probably even do the close up cam on this. I sure can. Let me move over here too. Jump into this. Oops. Why is it not working? I, I don't know. Why is it not working? I don't know. Hmm. Should I check my uh, my connection on the other computer? Yeah, for some reason, this is not working for me right now. So let me just go into your big cam right there, your single Skype, and then you can show it right there. You can show it here on the close-up, right. just on the main cam. Uh, let me see if this connection is still live here because we have some other close-ups to do too. No, it's still showing on that. All right, let me try it one more time. Maybe one because... Oh, there we go. Okay, it's up. It's probably because oh. it went into uh, sleep mode. Go ahead. Probably. Okay, so I've got my little squawk bottle right here, okay? The benefits here is that, you know, you, you could potentially have uh, more e-liquid capacity here. Uh, also, you're going to be able to use uh, atomizers that you might like, like a dripping atomizer that you might like the flavor, you might like the draw, uh, and so you'll be able to use that with this method, right? So you screw your little cap on like that, and then you would take that little bottle, and typically on the inside of a squawk box, you're going to have a little pin right there. You can see that pin. We're going to line the tube up with the pin. Find the hole, Phil. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Okay, and then the battery would sit here. And what we do is we squeeze this bottle as we're using it, and you'll notice the e-liquid come up that little port right there. Let's see if I can get the angle the right way. Yep. And you can see that e-liquid. Can you see the e-liquid? I sure can. Okay. So... That would require an atomizer, a dripping atomizer that is bottom feed capable. Okay, so here's a dripping atomizer. Uh, uh, one, did it did it freeze up again there? Do you nope, know? nope. Keep okay, because I can't see anything on my screen. Keep going, it's fine. On this nope, I, there's nothing on my screen. Okay, let me try this, and let me go back to this. Okay. There we go. Okay, so this is a this is a dripping atomizer. So if I pull the uh, the cover off of this one, you can see I can drip on here. But some of the uh, the dripping atomizers have bottom feeding capabilities. And if I screw unscrew this, and it's really tight right now, I can show you. There's a the the pin, the five ten pin. Okay, right there will have a little hole in it. Okay, so because of that little hole, now if I screw this onto the uh, the squonker and I squeeze this, you should see e-liquid start to come up in that atomizer and start to feed the wick. Yep. And you can see that right there. And I have one over okay. here too as well, uh, Phil. This is the um, the Joytech Luxotic box. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see here, this is where the little uh, liquid uh, bottle is. I actually have a uh, Gonzo's um, figs, uh, the one that you like, strawberry apple. Uh, oh, the, um, Duke, the, Duke, the, Duke, 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 Duke. Yeah, but so you'll see here as soon as I press that button, you're gonna get some liquid up there, and then you'll see the liquid coming up the chamber, and then when I let it go, and then you can actually see the wicks turn color. That means that they're getting saturated, and uh, and then you're ready to vape. And you can take a few vapes on that, and then as you as you feel it, you know, getting dry, you can just keep on squeezing. And I think that the word squonk here is a little bit again overplayed. Squonk just kind of came. Because we're actually squonking the bottle, it's not the actual device, but that's how the term was coined, and I was just kind of kind of stuck with it. I mean, bottom feeding, I think to me is a more accurate term. But when you hear squonk, all that means is that you're actually squonking, pressing this bottle to feed liquid up into the atomizer itself. It's a vape term. It, it really is. It really is. And again, it's one of these things that just kind of you know. I think you're ready to vape. You're ready to just take a little. Right. So I, I think the, the important thing to remember when it comes to either squonking or it comes to, to dripping is that it's a manual process, okay? You have to keep up on it. You have to remember to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, of course, you have to remember to make sure your tank is full as well, okay? But your, your tank lasts a certain period of time, and you can see the amount of e-liquid that's in your tank. 
squawking, squawking, squawking and dripping a little bit different unless you have a clear cover over your atomizer. Uh, you can't really see the amount of liquid that's on your wicking material. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to experience it, right? Now, that might lead to dry, scratchy hits if you forget to drip, if you forget to squonk. That also could lead to additional formaldehyde um, creation uh, because that's what happens when you have dry coils, right? Yeah. That's something that we don't want. So if you are dripping, if you are squonking, you really have to remember to keep up on it to, number one, get a good, satisfying vape. Number two, do it as safely as possible. Here's another question, uh, and I think I know your answer on this one, Phil, but do you think that dripping 30 mil mils of 2 milligram a day is excessive? Dripping 30? Yeah, I, I think dripping... Uh, don't think... It, so, you know, we've tried to answer this in, in a previous show that nicotine is not necessarily your enemy, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I think you should be more concerned with exposure to the amount of e-liquid that you're vaping. Um, because I think that's where more of the unknowns are. Uh, nicotine is a very well understood substance. It's a, uh, it's a very well documented substance where the unknowns are is kind of with the PG, the VG and the flavoring, right? So if you were to ask me, should I, would I be safer or would it be better? And of course I'm not a medical doctor, right? So right. we're going to have Dr. Farsalinos on the show here eventually, but would I be better off vaping two milligram, 30 mils a day, or 30 milligram, two mils a day, I'd kind of go the latter, right? Yeah, yeah. And again, this is not medical advice. It's just, it's just our thoughts on it. And, and uh, you know, obviously it would be better for, for somebody that's more professional to, to completely answer that. But if you just take law of averages, you know, since the unknown is the flavorings that we're using in these liquids, the more exposure that you have to that, the more you have to consider about, you know, what's going to happen. Is it safer than cigarettes? Absolutely. I mean, I have no doubt in my mind if you're vaping 60 mils a day, it's going to be. But again, it, it, this is all about harm reduction, and this is the way that we, me and Phil at least are approaching it as well, too. Mm -hmm. All right. I think that we covered all these styles and the feeling, including squonking. Right. Is we squonking going to be in the dictionary, you think, next year? What's that? Is squonking going to be in the dictionary next year? I don't know. I, 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 I very much doubt it. I very much doubt it. Which but yeah, I mean, when you, so squonking, squonking is the act of squeezing that bottle, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why these have become known as squonk boxes. Correct. Uh, and we're, uh, we don't have a lot of time, so let's move on to the main segment of our show, and that would be the types of tanks. And boy, there's tons of tanks on the market as well, too. There so are lots. I'm going to of... move over to your camera here now. No, and... not yet. Not yet. We, we don't need to be there yet. Let's okay. just go back on, on the both of us. We'll just talk about some of these uh, these tanks. So okay. the, you're going to have two main styles of tanks, okay? You're going to have rebuildable and replaceable, mm -hmm. okay? So a rebuildable is you put the coil in it yourself. You put the wicking material in it yourself. Then you have replaceable, um, replaceable. So if we talk about a rebuildable, a rebuildable could be the um, uh, what I what I showed before. The um, here it is, K Fun. K Fun is a rebuildable. You put the coil in there yourself. You put the the uh, the wicking material in there yourself. It could be the Aries. Uh, the Aries is going to be another rebuildable. Mm -hmm. Again, you put the coil in yourself. You put the wicking material in yourself. And then there's replaceable. Replaceable would be something like. Uh, the Kabuki, uh, something like the Zenith, right? Something like the um, the Aspire uh, Nautilus, uh, and all that means is you open up the tank. There's some way for you to get in that tank. You re you remove the uh, the coil head. Those coil heads are disposable, uh, and then you take a new coil head and you put a new coil head in there. Of course, you prime it first, right? Priming very very important. Yeah. And we've we shown that. that in a previous show. Mm -hmm. um, but that's that. Those are the two main kinds, and then of course, there's subcategories. Right. Now there's also pods, right? Dimitri, do you have some pods there? I sure do. Let me switch All over. Right. I got. I, I got to keep turning on the light every time that I do that. But uh, well, why can't you just leave the light on all the time? Because it looks like I have a halo on top of me. But uh, well, you do. You do have a halo. This is, this is a pod. This is uh, from the Sora and Air. This is just a small atomizer with a with a holding tank. Here's another one from. Well, I can't get that one off because my fingers are stuck. I'm going to try to get this one off. This is another one from Bo. This is another little small pod system that is out there. 
This is not replaceable. This has the liquid already inside, and after you're done vaping it, you throw it away. There's some hacks and stuff like that you can find on YouTube if you want to refill them. I mean, we, we you know, if, if that's what you want to do and it works for you, great, but these are not meant to be refilled. These are all, this one right here is to be thrown away. This one over here, you can refill it two, three times, four times until the coal starts going bad and your flavor is diminished, and then you can throw it away. Right, so there there are two main kinds of pods, right? There's going to be your open pod. And I think we're back up on this. I am. I just want to make sure everything is uh, working correctly. I really don't know what happened there. We back? Yeah, we're back. All right, good. I just I just put a little note on uh, YouTube that we lost the signal and it came back. Okay, All I right. think I think that uh, I just want to make. Okay, we're back. Go ahead. All right. So we were talking about pods, and there's two general types of pods, right? And you could think of a pod as a tank with the coil built in already, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and there's going to be an open pod, and there's going to be a closed pod. The open pod is going to give you the ability to put your e-liquid in yourself, okay? To use an e-liquid of your choice. Uh, and they're reusable. Not very, uh, you don't use them for very long. They typically don't last uh, very, very long, okay? Um, but, but you can fill them yourself. And then there's going to be closed pods. Closed pods are going to come with the e-liquid already inside, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, they're typically disposable. They're really not designed or meant to be refilled, okay? So once you use up all the e-liquid, you take it, you throw away, and then you use uh, another pod, okay? So those are the two primary styles. Now, there are some pods that allow you to change the coils, uh, pods similar to or, or like the uh, the Dolphin, the mm -hmm. Joytech Dolphin, mm -hmm. right? That would be a, a pod that you can change the coil on. But for the most part, you can think of a pod as the tank with the coil head already installed. Some of them you can refill a number of times. Some of them are disposable. Once the e-liquid is, is gone, you throw them away, you replace it with a new one. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's pods. That's replaceables. That's rebuildables. Now, under rebuildables, <laughs> here we go, there's a, fur there's a further breakdown. Yep. Okay? Some of them we've already talked about. Some of them we'll talk about again. So... Let's talk about the first one, Dimitri. You want to take it on? Uh, the RTA. So, RTA stands for Rebuildable Tank Atomizer. So this is basically what I showed earlier with the Quasar. Is basically usually a small bell that, uh, you know, the atomizer itself has a cap that is removed and that exposes the deck. And on the deck itself, you have an uh, area where you can build and position your coils depending on your style of vaping. You know, most of these rebuildable atomizers, unfortunately, up to now, hopefully that's going to change in 2018, have been for sub-ohm vaping. And the reason why is because oh, with these um, atomizers, you have the ability to really open up the airflow. You really can put a lot of slots inside to get a lot of air over the coils, which is needed. You need that air when you're sub on vaping at these very, very low resistances that usually these are built. And that again, that RTA has that same, as Phil said, the option that you can actually drip the liquid on top. Or you're you talking can... about RTA, buddy. RTA, not RDA, RTA. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about RDA to me. RTA. Uh, well, I just well, let me just cover the RDA and then you can get to the RTA. So on this, the RDA, you can actually drip the liquid on top or you can actually feed the liquid from the bottom if you have a pin that has a hole to actually lift the liquid up into a skunking box. Right. So again, RDA, uh, rebuildable dripping atomizer. We, 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 we skipped over RTA. We'll get back to RTA. Mm -hmm. But RDA, rebuildable dripping atomizer, it's a manual process. You're either dripping the liquid on the top or you're feeding it from underneath via squonking or some like a, like a siphon system like the, uh, the Inikin uh, lift box, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Okay. So now there's RTAs. RTAs. Uh, it's not a manual process. It's a rebuildable tank atomizer, okay? So you put the build in yourself, you put the wicking material in yourself, but the, uh, the, the tank itself, much like a replaceable coil tank, like a Zenith, like an Aspire Nautilus, it's going to hold a certain amount of e-liquid. Uh, and that e-liquid is going to get fed to the coil automatically via uh, the wicking material as you use it. So what's an example of an RTA? Uh, an example of an RTA, again, would be like the K-Fun. The K-Fun is an RTA. The um, the Siren One, the Siren Two, the uh, the Ares is an RTA. There are a lot a lot of RTAs uh, out there. But also you got to keep in mind that RTAs fall into the two categories. They fall into mouth to lung, mm -hmm. they fall into direct lung, or they fall into um, restricted direct lung, or yeah. they could cross you know different styles as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, you know, there's just so many subcategories that can become confusing for uh, for mm -hmm. a new vapor. 
And, you know, I know we're tossing a lot of information at the same time. However, it's good to at least familiarize yourself to avoid making bad purchases, especially when you're shopping online. Because there's not a lot of information on there. You know, you're going to go to a website that says a starter kit or it says, you know, this tank. And if you don't know exactly what you're buying, it might not, you know, number one, not be your style of vaping. Number two, you might get frustrated with it. Number three, the worst part is you're going to go back to cigarettes. So it's good for you to familiarize with what is out there. And then that way, when you're shopping, you can specifically look for stuff that fits your style. Right. Uh, and, and, you know, again, that's why we're, we're, we're doing this show is trying to demystify some of this, trying to give you guys some of the information. Unfortunately, it's a lot of information in a really short period of time. Uh, again, that's why we're going to make these slides available to you. And we are going to summarize this uh, as we get towards the end, uh, thinking about you as a beginning vapor, as a transitioning smoker, what you should be like most concerned with. And, and it's probably not a lot of this stuff to begin with, okay? Mm -hmm. But we want you to make make you aware that when you go to a shop, you're going to see and you're going to hear a lot of this stuff. So, uh, RDTA, Phil, rebuildable dripping tank atomizer. Rebuildable dripping tank atomizer. It's like okay, so it's like a, a rebuildable dripping atomizer and a rebuildable tank atomizer. They get together, they have atomizer sex, right? And what comes out <laughs> is a, a rebuildable dripping tank atomizer. So that is something that you can drip into, or maybe even you can you can bottom feed, but it also has liquid capacity, okay, mm -hmm. beyond just what the, the, the wick sits in uh, with the dripper. So there's some kind of tank there as well that through the process of dripping or the process of squonking, that tank will get filled up with e-liquid. Dimitri, do you have any RTAs there? I I do. I, well, I mean, I, I don't have one here uh, readily available, but uh, yeah, I've been trying to open up a package here for the last 20 minutes, believe it or not. Okay, I, I think I, I have one here that I can show if we go to the close-up uh, camera. The close-up camera working or no? I'm getting ready to switch over to it right now. Feels close-up. Boom. Okay, that should be working. Okay, so this is the um, this is the Nixon uh, from Gas Mods, and this is an RDTA. Mm -hmm. So if we take a look at the inside of this, and I haven't used this all that much, uh, but you'll notice it is rebuildable. Okay, but there is also a tank on this. Okay, mm -hmm. so if I were to squat from the bottom or if I were to drip into this, eventually the liquid would find its way into the tank section. Okay, so that would be an RDTA. Yeah. So you build it and then you also have a little tank that feeds up to it. Right. Basically. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's an RDTA. Now, um, even in RTAs, even in RTAs, rebuildable tank atomizers, there's different kinds of those, too, that you might hear. You might hear of, like, Genesis style mm -hmm. or GTA. What's that? What's Genesis style or GTA? Genesis styles, those, those are some of the earlier atomizers. Some of the earlier atomizers were Genesis style. Um, in, in effect, the Nixon is a Genesis style. In effect, the um, uh, the Ares is a Genesis style. The uh, the the... the um, uh, what else? The, the siren is a Genesis style. Mm -hmm. Really kind of what that means or what it did mean, what it did mean back in the day, um, there was a, uh, we, what we used was mesh. We used actual metal mesh and we would roll that mesh up into a, um, a wick, a wick. And we would take that wick and we would drop it into the e-liquid. So the e-liquid tank was down below uh, and we would wrap that mesh with our wire, with our heating uh, coil. Right there, there's an R, uh, there's a uh, Genesis? Uh, an atomizer right there. Is that a uh, Zen? Uh, no, this is uh, oh God, I'm gonna kill me. I can't remember. It's okay, it happens. But this is a Genesis style atomizer. This is the tank holding section where the mesh drops into. And if you look at the deck up top, you'll see that uh, this is where your mesh would come out, and then you'd wrap your little wire to get the resistance. Uh, on. Right. So what happens was that mesh would would wick the e liquid up up to up to the uh, the coil and that coil would get hot and create the vapor. Mm -hmm. um, now there are still some folks that use uh, mesh for wicks. There are some folks that use cable, actual uh, metal cable uh, for wicks. We saw a lot of that in Germany. I'm sure we'll see that again when we go back. Um, but I know for me, what I what I like to use as a um, a wick right now for a GTA like the Aries is cotton. Okay, uh, cotton works very very well to uh, to wick that e liquid up to the coil. Uh, one the last thing that I want to show as well, too, because it, 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 and, and again, I know this is very, very confusing, but there are some tanks that take both a replaceable coil and an actual RTA head. And this is a perfect example. I've been trying to open up this package, by the way, for 20 minutes. Very good job <laughs> on packaging for, uh, from UL. 
But this is this is basically a coil hill that you can actually rebuild yourself and put it into in place of a replaceable coil atomizer. You know, in my experience, a lot of these don't work very, very well. Uh, I mean, there are some models out there that do, and it's very, very intricate to work with because you've got a very, very small deck to build your coil and to wick it. But you are going to run into a situation where if you want don't want to buy replaceable coils, you can actually use these, uh, these repairable decks, as I want to call them, that actually go into a replaceable coil deck. Right. So what what Dimitri is talking about there is that there are some atomizers where you can ha you have the option of using uh, a pre-built coil head like you would see right here, uh, or you can unscrew that pre-built coil head and you can screw in a rebuildable deck. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it would look very very similar to this, only with the rebuildable section you can actually create your own coil, put your own wicking material in there. So some there are some tanks that have the that have the ability to do both if the parts are available. Yeah. Right. So why why do why do people rebuild, Dimitri? Well, I mean, save money is is uh, is a very good reason. I think the top three reasons would be you know save money. Number two, the flavor. I mean, if you if you get how building is and you you know how to adjust your airflow and the way that you build and the way that you wick, you get a much much better flavor than you do with a stock coil. And number three, there's the hobbyist side of it as well, too. I think right. that's something that a lot of people don't really mention, but I think that building your own coils creates a hobby into uh, the way that, that, that you enjoy vaping as well, too. And that's another reason why you keep your mind focused on vaping instead of keeping it focused on cigarettes as well, too. So I would say that would be the top three reasons. Right, and I would I would even add a a fourth reason is that you have control over the materials that are being used, sure, right? Sure. So if you like a certain kind of cotton, you can use that cotton. If mm -hmm. you like a certain kind of wire or a certain kind of gauge, a, a certain kind of anything, you have complete control over what goes into that atomizer. Now, so we kind of went over everything there. We went over uh, the styles. We went over the different kind of filling. We went over the different kinds of tanks that you'll you'll run into. Um, one thing that I want to touch on is resistance, and I think we're going to take on resistance uh, in a future show, but I think there's a common misunderstanding out there because I hear it a lot. Um, the other day I did a build uh, on the, um, the lift box, and here's the atomizer that I used, and this is the Galaxy. The Galaxies, yeah. Galaxies, right? And what I wound up doing to make a coil that worked well with the lift box is I wound up with a, a 0 .54, 0 0.54 stainless steel coil, and then I rebuilt it in the, uh, in the video, and it came out a little bit higher. And you, you, people tend to not understand or kind of freak out saying, well, well that, that resistance is way too low. That's way too low uh, for mouth to lung. You know, that's in the... The clouds grow clouds, and that's direct lunging, and that's, you know, volume vaping, uh, et cetera. No, that's not necessarily the case. Um, one of the, the greatest examples that I can give is the the old uh, the older, at this point, the original Joytech Ego AIO, okay? Mm -hmm. That came with what? They were 0.6 ohm uh, coils, right, Dimitri? Yep, yep, yeah, absolutely. 0.6 ohm coils, yet it was an excellent, excellent mouth-to-lung vape. And here, even at that... I think I'm at 0.7 now on the rebuild. Mm -hmm. It looks like you're enjoying it. Oh, yeah. It, I got this working much better now, buddy. I'm going to send you that <laughs> atomizer. Don't worry. I, I thought you sent it already. What the hell? I know. I'm sorry. But um, still a really, really good mouth-to-lung, right? Yeah. So mouth-to-lung is, I think it's less about the resistance, right, and a little bit more about the airflow through the atomizer. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's it's about the chamber size, it's about the chimney, it's about how and where the uh, the air hits the coil. So don't think that you can't have a a quality mouth to lung under one ohm. You can certainly do that. I totally agree with you. Uh, it all boils down to premise. Let me pull another question here. Uh, do you think uh, this is from advection? Uh, is PG dangerous? I don't have an allergy to it, but it can turn to formaldehyde if heated to a certain point. Uh, PG has been uh, tested since the 40s for inhalation. I, I wouldn't worry about it. In fact. PG and nicotine are the two uh, ingredients in, in vaping I have absolutely no concerns over. I think you can vape PG and nicotine till you know it comes out of your eyeballs. I think you're going to be fine. Anything can turn into formaldehyde when you heat it up too much, right? Uh, and again, it's the dosage, not the poison. It's how much formaldehyde is being produced. So I wouldn't worry about it at all. Again, this is not medical advice, but personally, I would say uh, yeah, I wouldn't worry about it at all. Here's some, here's some more non-medical advice. At least it's something to think about. 
in reality, I have been vaping probably since I'm 16 years old. Well, how is that possible? That vaping didn't even exist when I was 16 years old because that's like a million years ago. Mm -hmm. Well, exactly. I've been in the I've been in the nightclub business since I'm 16 years old. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and before me, uh, there were people who have been in the nightclub business a lot longer than that, and they have been around not only in the nightclub business but also in the the theatrical uh, industry, fog machines. Okay. And if you think about what a fog machine is, it's basically a very, very big vaporizer. The biggest difference is airflow is controlled by you in a vaporizer. With a fog machine, mm -hmm. uh, it's controlled by a high-pressure pump, okay? Yeah. And what that high-pressure pump does is it shoots e – well, I'm not going to – I almost called it e-liquid. It shoots fog fluid, which, by the way, is very, very similar to e-liquid, yeah. okay? It's PG and it's VG. Uh, the cheaper fog fluid is more PG and it dissipates faster. The more expensive fog fluid is higher VG and it hangs around a little bit longer and it creates a thicker cloud. Okay, yeah. uh, so it pushes that that fog fluid through a, a high pressure pump and it hits a heating element and it vaporizes on the way out. Okay, these have been used for years and years and years, um, and as far as I know, nobody's ever been hurt by one. Okay. Yeah. Now I, I do remember some folks that used to come to the club back in the day that had, um, they they were actually PG intolerant. Okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe they had an allergy to PG, which some folks do, right? And, and they were bothered by the fog. It still didn't hurt them, but they were bothered by it. But um, so it, you know, if you think about it that way, I've been vaping for a lot longer than since 2009. Right. Yeah, yeah. And as far as I know, nobody's ever been killed by a fog machine or they would have been banned a long, long time ago. Absolutely. All right. Let's move along. Uh, Phil, we're running out of time. Number one. And number two, we've got a lot, a lot of information. I mean, a lot, a lot of information. And I think sometimes it gets overwhelming. Uh, you know, take a pause, go back, look at the replay, break it down into the sections that really interest you yes. or timestamp it for people that are asking these questions as well, too. I see a Maybe. lot of repeat questions in the chat as well, too. Go look at the previous episodes where we talked about nicotine salts and some other stuff as well, too. Go ahead. Phil. Maybe what we'll do then is we'll, we'll bypass the, the, the last section here that we talked about doing. OK. Mm -hmm. And maybe what we can do is let, let's summarize uh, the tanks. And let's open up the phone lines and take some questions for the rest okay, of the Okay, the show. phone lines are open at 215-383-5752. You have to press 1 when you hear the British lady speaking. That way I can see you on the switchboard that you are wanting to participate. And uh, you want me to move to your close-up cam? No. Do we okay. Why? No, okay, go ahead. Recap. No, uh, no I just wanted to, uh, to just summarize this, especially for the, the folks joining us who are thinking about vaping, who are making the transition. Mm -hmm. A lot of the rebuildable stuff, at this point, if you're just coming into the game, uh, kind of ignore it. We went over a lot of information. We went over a lot of different kinds of tanks. But at this point, I would focus on two kinds of tanks. I would either focus on a pod, a pod system, mm -hmm. or I would focus on a user replaceable coil head tank, yeah. right? Uh, because those are going to be uh, your easiest to work with. Uh, you don't have to rebuild. You don't have to get all the materials and have all the tools to rebuild. It's just a simple little coil head that you have to put a little bit of e-liquid in there to, to get it primed, to get it started. You screw it in your tank. You fill up your tank with e-liquid. You set your wattage, and you go ahead and you enjoy your vape. Some devices, you don't even have to set the wattage yeah. on. But uh, as, a, as a transitioning vapor, if you are looking for something that is most similar to your cigarette, okay, that's kind of where you want to start. That's where I, I, I would start. That's where I would think you should start. Dimitri, is that how you feel? I totally agree. I think that simplicity, but again, trade-offs. What are you looking for? How much do you smoke a day? You know, you're four or five cigarettes a day. You know, you can get away with a pod system and it's not going to be too expensive. If you're a heavy smoker, though, keep in mind, pod systems will get very, very expensive. You might be spending $12 to $15 a day on pods, making it more expensive to vape than it is to smoke. You know, go to your vape shops, open up and tell them exactly what you're looking for, what you're looking to get satisfied as well, too. In my opinion, I have nothing against pod systems, but in my opinion, you get a more satisfactory vape through an open vapor system. And of course, something that you can refill to make it more inexpensive as well, too. But there are some hassles that goes along with that as well, too. So you have to find something that's very, very simple. I think we had talked about um, pre-show to do a presentation on the Kobe. Maybe we'll do <laughs> I guess it at Kobe again, did I? You did. What is your problem? <laughs> I don't know. I can't say Gobi for some reason, uh, which is a really, really, you know, very simple, very inexpensive starter open vapor system kit that is out there as well, too. You can find a little bit more cheaper. You can find a little bit more expensive, depending on what you want to spend. And of course, how many cigarettes you smoke a day. I think that's very, very important. And your tobacco flavors, what kind of flavors you're looking for. So, 
Yes, I definitely agree with Phil. Pod system or a simple open vapor system is the starting point for anybody that is out there. Just today on the Greek Facebook page that I'm at on Vape Like Geek, some, a guy came in and was complaining he got an Alien 85 with a Baby Beast tank. Again, the same thing. You know, I can't, I'm not satisfied. You know, I'm, I can't, the way that the airflow is and stuff like that. Be very, very careful on suggestions because somebody's using something doesn't necessarily mean that that is what's right for you. Okay. So always go out there and do your own research. Go to the vape shops, try stuff out and see what fits your style of vaping. I hate to see people spending 80 to 100 to 150 dollars on a kit that is not for them. It's not that the kit is bad, not that the Smoke Alien 85 is bad or the Baby Beast tank is bad. It does not fit your, you know, what you're looking to get out of vaping. And then you think to yourself, oh, vaping doesn't work. I just throw 150 bucks away and then you're going to go back to cigarettes. So, yeah, right. very, very important to do research. So, I mean, Dimitri and I have heard both sides of the coin, right? So we've heard, you know, the side of the coin where somebody goes into the vape shop, they're a beginning vapor, they walk out with, you know, a 200-watt mod and the baby beast, and it's direct lung, and it's it's a sub-ohm, and it's nothing like vaping, and it doesn't satisfy them, and they go back to smoking. Mm -hmm. We've also heard the other side, where they, they started with, with a mouth-to-lung device, they weren't satisfied by that until they got into direct lung, mm -hmm. okay? So, you know, you have to find what's right for you. So if you go into a vape shop, you should not only be concerned, you know, especially as a transitioning first-time vapor, you should not only be concerned about the flavor that you're you're getting, you need to be concerned about the experience that you're getting. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, a quality vape shop, you should tell them, I, I want to experience a pod system. Mm -hmm. I want to experience mouth to lung. I want to experience direct lung. I want to experience restricted direct lung. I want to see what's right for me, yeah. okay? So get, get the full a experience. Good, a good vape shop should be able to provide that service uh, for you, unless you're in one of those places where they're not allowed to do that, right? Mm -hmm. But um, you know, if if you if you go to a vape shop and they're not able to, you know, provide that service, uh, maybe you should find, you know, one a, that, that, a, a different a different vape shop. Let me take a phone call since we have it on here, Phil, and I'm hoping that all this is going to work today. Six four seven, you're on the air Hello? with Phil and Demi. What's up? Hello, Hello? Can, you, can you hear me? Hey guys. Hey, what's going on? Um, so I uh Oh, they're listening to Hey, the... um so I'm uh wondering a recent Hello? Go ahead, go ahead. We'll we'll answer your question. Go ahead. Um I, I can hear Hello? the stream in your phone line. If, if can you turn that down, if you don't mind. Yeah, just just turn down the show and just listen to what she, what you hear on the phone. Hey, um, so I'm uh, wondering. Hello. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. We'll, we'll answer your question. Go ahead. Hey, um, so I'm uh, wondering. Hello. Go ahead. Go ahead. We'll answer your question. Go ahead. Okay. That wasn't my fault. I'll be, I, I promise you it's not my fault. <laughs> no, well, he's listening to the show. I know, I know, I know. It's getting good. 636, you're on the air with Phil and Demi. What's up? Hello? Is, is, are, are they not hearing me for some reason? I, I, I don't know. It's, it's your board. Oh, come on. Don't, don't. You have all the controls there. You, you have know, all the every, knobs. Everything is fine on my end. All the dials. We'll get this, guys. Don't you? Hello, worry. can you hear me? Oh. For some reason, they can't hear me on the phone for some reason. But they should be able to hear me. Everything is working correctly. I thought you had this all worked out. Everything is working fine. I don't know what's wrong. Hello? Oh, they dropped as well, too. Maybe my phone lines are not working. <laughs> uh -huh. No, it can't be. Everything is working. Hey, Bill, call in and see if it's working. Just, just to make sure that everything is working fine. But it should be working. But, I mean... If you want, we can uh, we can show the Gobi kit. I I'm prepared to do that, and you could work on the phone lines. Okay, absolutely. Go ahead. I'm going to switch over to your close-up cam. And people were asking us for, for suggestions for starter kits, and I think that the Gobi kit is a really, really good, inexpensive, first-time starter kit where people can try it vaping. Yeah, and that's this is uh, going to be one of the things that we want to do in the show is we do want to show starter kits, uh, not only from Minikin but from other companies as well. You know, open them up, give you kind of a tour of, of what they do, how to set them up. Hold on a second, Phil. Let me just check here. 504, can you hear me? <coughs> Hello, my vaping friends. Hey, what's up? Can you hear me? <laughs> hey, guys. Hi. Um, Lewis from uh, New Orleans here, guys. Hey. Um, I called in on the last show. 
and I asked you for advice. I had a friend who was uh, on a, a pack of Newports a day habit, and uh, you recommended me uh, some juices to get him, and uh, I ended up getting him an eye care and a menthol juice, uh, 18 milligram, and he has not had a cigarette in wow. almost two weeks. That's really fantastic. I want to thank you guys for that. Thank you so much. I appreciate really you calling and, and giving us uh, giving us an update on that. That's really. I just want to make sure. <laughs> I'm sorry, Phil. I just want to make sure that you can hear <laughs> us. That's my only. That's my only concern right now. Hold on a second. Let me put you on hold. Let me pull Bill yep. up here. Bill, can you hear me, Bill? Hey. Yep. Uh, okay. I'd like to talk to uh, Mr. Uh, Dimitri <laughs> and Phil, please. <laughs> Hold on a second. Just tell me you can hear me and feel. That's all I want to know. That was all, that's all I wanted to know, Bill. That's all. Bill, leave, please. Leave the comedy for us, okay? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you both on the phone here. Okay, so it's not me. I can hear you both on the phone here. There you go, Phil. You jumped down. My, okay, I'm just going to stand by. Hold on. All right, Lewis, I'm going back to you. Apparently, you can hear us, Phil. Go ahead. This is Lewis that called in and told about the eye care and the menthol. Uh, so that was the uh, the menthol guy, and you made the recommendation for the menthol cigarette, yes. the menthol vape. And, 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 yes, and, yes. Your, friend, your, and your, friend has been, your friend has been off cigarettes for how long now? He has been off cigarettes uh, for almost two weeks now. Look at that. Look at that. that I mean, that, that, is, that is the purpose of this show, and I so appreciate you calling in and letting us know yeah, that. You know, awesome. I, think, I think menthol smokers might have an easier time transitioning to, to vaping because I think you can get menthol vapes that, that are really, really similar to the um the menthol cigarette i remember vaping something like a long time ago that was man it was like a spot on newport spot on newport mm -hmm. when you get to like you know what spot on marlboro or what spot on marlboro light i think it's a little bit more challenging but i think menthol smokers might have a actually an easier time transitioning uh, because of the, the the menthol crystals that we can put in uh, e-liquids well lewis you, know, you might change this guy's I life think. i mean isn't that how powerful is that i mean it's it's just a feel good yeah, thing yeah you know? Yeah. And uh, this is a this is a guy who's 40, 43 years old and has been smoking since he was a teenager. Wow. That's so that's, that's quite a lot of smoking See, to, to combat, you know. It, it is. And, you know, I love to hear stories like that. You know, you're never too old to quit and you're, you're never too old to maybe live a little bit longer when you quit. You know, whether you, vaping is not just for the young, you know, as you get older, you start to face your, your yes. mortality and you start to think about, you know, how can I change my life to maybe make it a little bit longer? Uh, if you're a smoker, this is certainly one of those ways. Yeah. And, and listen, and I think it's a pretty easy way too. Lewis, if you, if you can, maybe two weeks when we have the next show, why don't you uh, have him call in? Maybe we can hook him up with a little upgrade and just see how his journey has been and how he's doing and how he's feeling. That would be really awesome. Uh, sure. I can probably make that happen. Thanks, Lewis. I appreciate the call, man. Thanks a lot for calling in. Uh, I got a bunch of the li lineups uh, of phone calls going on, Phil. So I just got to, I got to keep moving. I got to okay, keep moving. Thank, thank you, Lewis. That's awesome. Nine seven one. You're on the air with Phil and Dimmy. Nine seven one. Can you hear me? Nine seven one. Yes. Is it me? That's you. Uh, okay. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. I'm not sure. I'm calling from uh, UAE, Dubai. Wow! All the way from Dubai. Yes, that is so awesome. Listen, we want to come to your country. To <laughs> I wish, really, but the streets we are a little bit strict here about I vaping. Know. It's I not uh, legalized. Yeah, I understand. But in some GCC countries, yes, it is already uh, legalized. Like in Kuwait and Bahrain, vaping is already there, and vape shops are coming up. Uh, I want to talk to Mr. Uh, Pibusardo. Yes, go ahead. He's listening. Yes. Yeah, Mr. P, you are my, to me, you are a godfather of vaping. <laughs> well, I, 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 I certainly do appreciate I always, that. I, I really do appreciate that. Yeah, you know, I, I, I always, don't, follow, I, I always listen. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm really flattered. I'm so honored now to uh, talk to you guys. I have a little uh, query. I, what I face usually and always with the uh, Clapton scattered coils, alien coils, is the spit, spit back. Mm -hmm. I could not figure this one out <laughs> yet. Yeah, I, th I think, well, I mean, I'll jump in here as well, too, my friend from Dubai. It's, you know, spit back, it can happen in any coil. It doesn't have to be uh, clapped in it. It can be just a yeah. single, single space coil or, or, uh, or, you know, a micro coil, right, Phil? 
Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, if right. you're if you're doing if you're doing your own builds, uh, one of the things that I recommend if you are getting a lot of spit mag is make the cotton in your coil very very dense. Okay. Um, I just I I just uh -huh. my experience uh -huh. has been if I have cotton that's looser in the coil itself, uh, I tend to get more spit back. Um, wh what I think that might be caused by is is that the the gap or the distance between the yeah. cotton and the coil and like liquid popping in there okay mm -hmm. so i tend to get less um spit back or I, I wouldn't even call it spit back i would call it popping uh when my co when, when my cotton is more dense in the coil yeah play around with the cotton i think that's obviously the number one uh thing that we see is you know we've had those with the aries as well too some people say spit back and it's usually cotton related I mean, it's, it's how the liquid sits on top of your build, really. Well, it is when you hit that button. If it's overfeeding, you're going to get more liquid on top, and obviously it's going to pop when, when, you're, uh, when you're hitting the button. Agree. Agree. All right. Well, thank you so much. Hey, listen, we're planning to come to Dubai. Trust me, you might see us there this year. We are in the process of working with somebody to come to Dubai. So if we make it there, we, we hope that, we, that you come out and meet us. Yeah, it's funny because Dimitri and I were we were we were just talking My about travel My name is plans. Mansour, by the way. Mansour, we appreciate that, and we hopefully will see you uh, in person one day. Yeah, thank and thank you very much for the kind words. Well, you know, I, I don't consider helped. myself the the godfather of vaping. Um, I think there's a lot of people who came before to me, me but I certainly do appreciate it, my friend. Thank you, Monsieur. Have a great day. I think it is now there in in Dubai. And you got me. How how cool is that feel? Somebody just called you from Dubai and called you the Godfather. We were just we were just talking about our travel plans coming we up, and and we might have a layover in Dubai. Yes. So we might actually get to at least see the airport. Yes. But there is there is a possibility that we will go to Dubai for an event. So we're we're, we're working on that. I got one more phone call here. Let me let me bring this in. Uh, five. One, by the way, I just want you to apologize for me saying that I broke the phone lines because it wasn't my fault. Just go ahead and apologize now. I, I apologize. Good. Five one seven. You're on the air with Phil and Dimmy. Five one seven. Hello? Hi. Who's this? Hey, my name is Scott. Um, actually, I've been watching you guys since the beginning of my vape, or actually previous to to my vaping experience. Mm -hmm. Um, I reached out to Phil, uh, through email, through his website and thanked him for his help and guiding me, you know, or at least through his videos. Uh, and I wanted to just reach out and say, I appreciate what you guys do. And, uh, you know, it's been a big help. March 7th is my four year day. Awesome. Congratulations, well, my friend. Isn't it an amazing wow. feeling? Uh, well, Scott, you know, that's okay. awesome, man. Scott, can I ask you a question? What was your biggest challenge when you started vaping? Sure. And as you've progressed now into four years, I'm sure you're in a happy vape place, as we call it, right? But what was your biggest challenge, do you think, <laughs> converting into, into vaping from smoking? You know, uh, I guess I'm one of the lucky ones, and I hate to say that mm -hmm. uh, to disappoint others, possibly. But I um, was a two-pack a day, I rolled my own type of thing, mm -hmm. um, smoker. And I went and I was coughing so much in the mornings when I would get up and go to work that I would start to get blackouts, you know, when mm -hmm. you get so much intense coughing. And so I decided, you know what, this is the time after yeah. 20 plus years. And uh, I went to the local gas station down the street, bought a um, cigar like, if you will, mm -hmm. and thought, I'll try it. And I went ahead and used it for, you know, two, three days and said, you know, it's not terrible. Let me see what else I can do better. And it was about seven days and I was done. Fantastic. I converted over, you know, I bought an Ego and, you know, some of the, you know, early uh, atomizers and stuff like that when, when I was in, in the game, at least, <laughs> starting out. And yeah, that's that's I was it was easy for me. Did you go and straight I've to tried YouTube? To help others, it's not been easy for them. Did did you did you go straight to YouTube? Well, you, I did. Yeah, see, and this is another reason why we want to have this show on YouTube for smokers. I mean, I think that a lot of people just go straight to YouTube try to get that information out there. 
uh, and, and do a little bit more research. I think YouTube is a great platform for that because you can just, just quickly search and, you know, you boop, here comes a video. And you can actually hear somebody talking to you about the product as well, too. And others, it's easier. Others, it's more difficult. I get it. You know, I mean, if you're a gadgety guy, obviously vaping is going to be much, much easier than somebody that's not really a gadgety person. Yeah, sure. It, it wasn't difficult for me. Um, but I can see where, you know, here's where I thought with some of my family members that it came into an issue for them to try to do it is if you're in a nine to five job and you get a 15 minute break and you're trying to get out there and get your two or three in, um, yeah. in that time frame or whatever, it's very difficult for them to get the satisfaction mm -hmm. and, um, or it could be at least. Yeah. And, so, but for me, it wasn't, yeah. uh, I didn't have that restriction, fortunately. So I could just do it on. Yeah. And, and I think that the salts, you know, the salts, leisure, so to speak. Yeah. I think that the salts help that as well too, to get that quick nicotine fix as we're progressing more into these products. And I think that obviously, you know, the restrictions, I was the same way. I didn't have any restrictions I, at the restaurant. I just go back in the office and vape or before that I'd vape in the restaurant before, uh, the clouds. But, um, you know, I, th I think you're absolutely right. I think there's so many variables, but, you know, I think at the end of the day, everybody can find something. Phil, you want to jump in here? Well, I, I think what Scott said is really important, too, is that I think, uh, you know, everybody's going to have a different experience. Everybody's going to have a different, you know, they're, they're going to have, uh, Scott happened to be really lucky because he, he, he found um, what he liked and he used it and he was able to convert uh, really, really quick. Other people are going to have more difficulties. They're going to have a little bit more challenge finding the e-liquid that, that they like, finding the mm -hmm. device that they like, finding the, the, the tank that they like. Uh, other people are going to continue to smoke while they're, they're vaping. You know? So everybody's going to have their, their own experience. But I always say at this point, at this point, where we are today, compared to where we were when I started vaping in 2009, okay, if you can't find the right device and the right liquid and the right setup and the right style for you, you may not just be, you may not be ready to quit yet. Yeah. It, it, it may not be your, you have to want to quit. You have to want to not smoke. And that's one of the, you know, the great things, the patches and the gums. And I could almost see why in that, that article from the cancer society, why they want people to try the patches and the gums and all that stuff first. Okay. Because if you can wean yourself off of cigarettes using that, hopefully you're going to be able to get off of the patches and the gums easier okay and then you're doing nothing you're doing nothing you know vaping kind of takes the smoking and it, it gives you vaping but the, the benefit of vaping is that it simulates smoking so you get the hand to mouth you get the oral fixation you get the throat hit you get the flavor you get the fake smoke okay so i think that's one of the reasons why vaping works better for people then the patches and the gums, right? But I think everybody's going to have their own experience. Everybody's going to have, you know, their own difficulty level in making the transition. The only thing I want to see people do is give it a fair shot. Give it a fair shot. Do, you know, yes. really kind of, you know, try your hardest to make the transition. And you too, you too can be like Scott and, and, and not be a smoker anymore. Absolutely. Thanks so much for the call, man. We certainly appreciate you calling in and uh, keep it up. Help people quit smoking. That's what it's all about. Thank you, Scott. I'm trying. No problem. Have a good night, guys. There he goes, everybody. Scott. Why? They're lining up again. Jesus, this board is lighting up, Phil. Wow. You, Let's you, talk to the I, Godfather of vaping. See, yeah, can you actually see yeah, calls yeah, I can on actually, the board? Yeah, I can actually see all the phone you calls. Take, that you have to take in. a picture of your board for me at some point. I will. I will. 636, you're on the air with Phil and Demi. Hey, is that me? That is you, my friend. What's your name? Oh, awesome. This is Mike. I'm calling from Missouri. Hey, Mike, what's going on? I just wanted to hey, I just wanted to say thanks to both of you guys. I had smoked for oh geez, thirty some years. Uh found a uh advertisement on a <laughs> one of the trash receptacles in front of a convenience store. Mm -hmm. I was talking about this thing called an e cigarette. Mm hmm of course, it was a sig alike, and uh, I bought one. Thought it wasn't too bad, but uh, the fact that it didn't last long and was relatively expensive for what it was, so I went to Google, mm -hmm. wound up finding Phil, Mr. Bizardo, mm -hmm. uh started watching his videos, 
and found the uh, e-cigarette form. Moved from the Sigalite. The very first device I had was a bolt with a uh, Bogue cartomizer tank on top of it. <laughs> mm-hmm. There you go. And that got me off cigarettes. I haven't had one since. Yeah. Is it amazing? I mean, it's so like, the first thing I want. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish your thought. Go. No, go ahead, DB. Well, what I was going to say is that if you can quit with a bolt <laughs> in a cartomizer <laughs> tank, really, today, you should, we should eliminate combustible tobacco as we know it. You know, I mean, that's, again, I'm seeing it maybe a little bit biased, but honestly, I truly believe that. Oh, I agree. Wholeheartedly. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the question I had was, um, obviously, I've moved on. I've got one of the uh, Aries. Mm-hmm. I've got a Berserker running on an Evic Mini. Mm-hmm. And I just got in some stainless steel wire. Okay. want to try temperature control. And my question is, what would you guys say would be the maximum um wattage or maximum temp rather i'm sorry Mm -hmm. maximum temp that you think would be safe with stainless um i know i'm probably not going to be running max but i'd kind of like an idea of a range that i can feel safe okay i'm definitely going to turn that over to mr pibusardo because (laughs) he's the one that that uh that plays around with that uh, the most so go ahead phil Okay, so first of all, we are absolutely, without a doubt, going to have a full show on temperature control. Once I am mentally prepared for that show, we're we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Um, now, so are you a um, are you a direct lung vapor or are you a mouth to lung vapor? Mouth to lung. Mouth to lung. Okay. So of course, the, your your maximum temperature is going to depend on. Um, the device that you're using, okay? It's going to depend on the the device that you're using. It's going to depend on the board that's in the device. It's going to depend on the atomizer that you're using. Temperature control will also depend on things like uh, time of the day, phase of the moon, and the color underwear that you're wearing, okay? Uh, the, the, you know, there's, just, there's, there's so many there's so many variables. But here's what I'll, here's what I'll recommend. Uh, if you if you are doing temperature control and you're doing it with something like a berserker and you're doing it something like with like an Aries and, and stainless steel uh, material, set your wattage. If if you ha- if the if the device that you're using has the ability to adjust wattage and temperature at the same time, right? Set your wattage lower. Set your wattage to maybe 20 watts or maybe 30 watts. Okay, and then your temperature. What I typically do on a temperature control device, I start low. I start at around 370 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, and then depending on the accuracy of that device, okay, I'll, I'll have to adjust up. Um, where I wind up being on a good device, on a good device, I wind up being 420 degrees to 430 degrees Fahrenheit, okay, for mouth to lung, low wattage uh, temperature control. Uh, now, I mean, as far as like what's safe, I think the goal with temperature control is not burning your wick, right? So, Right. If you have if you have an empty tank, uh, and you're using temperature control, and you could taste burning cotton, okay, something's not something's not right, or you have the temperature set too high. Typically, if I do like wick burning tests on a, a temperature control device, I'll see some singeing at 500 degrees. I'll see no singeing at 420 degrees, right? Uh, and I think that that tends to be my comfort zone uh, when it comes to temperature control. Is is on an accurate device? what is accurate when it comes to temperature control? That's a really good question. Um, but I, I, I tend to be like 420, 430, 440. Okay. Uh, very okay. rarely 450, almost never above 450. So th- does, right. that, does that help at all? Because, you know, temperature control is one of those things, one of those things, boy, when you have it working, it, it'll work really, really well. It does what it's supposed to do. Um, and, and, you know, I'll explain in a future show why I like temperature control, but man, temperature control other times will be one of the most frustrating things that you will, you will come across, uh, in vaping. <laughs> yeah. I, I get frustrated yeah, with it a lot too. That's, so, don't give up. <laughs> that's all I say. Don't give up. Oh no. No, actually, uh, I'm starting to save up for one of the new, uh, evolved board 
devices when they hit the uh, yeah. hit the shelves. Yeah, but, we'll have to have Brandon on to talk about that in a future episode. Uh, yeah, well, so Brandon, uh, Brandon called me as we were going to Vegas, um, and when he got to Vegas, we were leaving Vegas. He got there for TPE. I was there on vacation. Uh, and he did say that he wants to come uh, to the house again and kind of present the technology the way he did before. Now, I haven't heard from him since. Maybe I'll send him a little a little tickler, a little reminder. Uh, but I would love to have him. And I think it's the, the replay technology, right? Um, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd love to have him come on and, and, and talk about it again. I think that would be absolutely fantastic. All right, I appreciate Thanks, the answer. Brother. I'll get off here because I'm sure you got somebody else to talk to you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate everything you're doing, and uh, keep on vaping. Thanks, brother. Have a wonderful night. Thank you so much. Take care. All right, moving along. Two one five. You're on the air with Demi and the Godfather. Oh, please. <laughs> Hello, two one two one five. You're on the air. Nope. Hello. Hi. Hey. Me. I'm glad I got through to you. Cool. Who is this? This is Diana Geiger. Oh, hi, Diana. How are you doing? How are you? Great. I'm fine. Well, I'm actually not fine. Why? I just got um. I just got um. Diagnosed with lung cancer today. Oh my God! I am so sorry to hear that. Thank you. Is this coming? I'm a little disturbed to hear it myself. Is this coming from from uh, from from smoking? Um, well, apparently, um, I had a CAT scan about three weeks ago and they said I had a spot Mm -hmm. and I got a PET scan Thursday and I got a call from my doctor today saying I've got a malignant lung tumor. And, and, uh, and if if you don't mind me, Diane, just for the people that are listening as well, how long did you smoke for? I smoked for about 30 years. 30 years, huh? And then I I, I moved to a vape as soon as they came out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was... The second they came out, I, they looked like cigarettes. They were little batteries. They gave you little cartridges. I guess um, a few years later, I moved to a vision spinner. <clears throat> and then from there, I moved to um, an, a VTR, which I still have. Yeah. And I taste VTR. 90 seconds. I an IPVD3, mm-hmm. and I started um, sub-oming. And I don't know what happened. I can say this. The damn thing was in my hand all day. Yeah. Now, smoking is one thing. You know, you light your cigarette, you smoke it, you put it out, and you go on with your day. Yeah. But my, my vape was in my hand yeah. all day. Yeah. Well, I mean, and you... I started doing a great lung hit. And, and every morning for the past 60 years, seconds. Now, I've been waking up, and I can't get my lungs to clear. Yeah, uh, it was it, never like that. Ignore the lady that's that's talking. And you know, listen. I mean, if thirty years of smoking is a very very long time, and damage can be done. I'm not trying to blame one or the other uh, in your case. It is. The thing, the thing that that I that, agree. that I find with with for me personally for subone vaping is that I feel like I have to vape a lot, so to, to get the nicotine that I want. So when I vape a lot, I feel that same way too. I feel you know my chest congested and stuff. That's just me though. That's my style of vaping. I prefer the mouth to lung vaping. Again, nothing against subone. Let's not make any you know claims here or start start any kind of uh, you know panic uh, through through the community. The, the the fact remains that. You know, obviously, our prayers and thoughts are with you, Diane. There's just no no doubt about it. And 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 uh, ten w- seconds. Ignore the British lady. No matter. We'll see what the doctor's going to say. What's going to be the the method that they're going to proceed? But you know, you you really have to think back and 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 look at the the how many years you know that the smoke was going into your lungs. I, I think so. Yeah, most likely. I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to blame anything. I'm. I don't even know where to go right now. I mean, my husband died last April, and I just feel like. I mean, his was cancer. It wasn't from anything like this, but I'm just kind of lost right now, and I don't want to blame vaping, but I'm just scared. Yeah. And I don't want vaping to be blamed because I think vaping has really helped so many people. Yeah. Yeah. So so many people. Yeah. And I've never heard of anybody having this. 
No, it like is, me. it's not something Nobody. that develops uh, just, you know, it, it takes takes years for something like that to develop. It's something that's over, overnight is going to develop, um, you know, for, for, for as serious as your case is. But like I said, all we can do is offer you our support, our thoughts, and your prayers. And, you know, me and Phil are always here for you. Well, listen, I love you all. I don't want you to stop vaping. I don't want you to go back to cigarettes. I just don't want you to keep it in your hand and just be doing it every day puff of your breath like i did so if you're gonna vape you do it like a cigarette and yeah. then put it down don't yeah. do this to yourselves guys i love you all love Please you too diane be safe be careful love, love you all love you too diane have God a bless. thank you, God diane. Bless. Thank you, you. diane we we, we do are you you're in our thoughts and our prayers and please Hello. please keep us posted as to your your progress too yeah it's it's uh well that's a that's a tough one there i mean all you can do is just offer your support and your thoughts and your prayers to her and uh you know I've seen it, you know, Kevin Skipper uh, posted the other day, you know, he's in the early stages of COPD. And uh, it's because of the, you know, the, the, the 15 years that he smoked. And thankfully, right. he, he found vaping. And he said that that switching to vaping slowed down his progress of, of COPD as well, too. So we do a lot of damage to our body through tobacco smoke that takes years. I mean, it takes years for a cigarette to kill you anyway. You know, you don't just smoke a cigarette and drop dead the next day. Right. So I think that we have to take all that into consideration and take everything into uh, account as well, too. All right, one last phone call. 250, you're on the air with Phil and Demi. Hey, it's... Uh I'm calling from a senior's home for Skechers, and <laughs> we needed we needed a little comic uh, relief after that. Yeah, it was it was it was very difficult to hear. Yep. Well, uh, if it it may not make feel too much better, but I've um, I've had the two surgery facial surgeries from uh, skin cancer. I'd mm -hmm. been a real heavy smoker for about forty five years. Yeah. So, just kind of hang in there and keep going. Yeah. Um, what I want to do is uh, find out for some of the new people, the smokers or brand new vapers, when they first go into a vape shop, what kind of questions should they ask? Yeah, that's a very, very good question, um, Phil. I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you handle that one. Um, what, what kind of questions should you ask? Uh, I, I'm not sure. You know, you, you should do you should do research, you know, on your own before you even go into the vape shop. I mean, you should kind of know what you're getting yourself into. Um, one of the things, like, so this is back in 2009 when I was even considering vaping, right? I went and I researched as much as I possibly could about what I was about to do. Um, and, you know, it was crazy, and I, I, I've told the story before, but, like, I knew cigarettes were going to kill me. I knew cigarettes were going to kill me 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road, 30 years down the road. I just wanted to make sure that vaping wasn't going to kill me next week, right? Um, and, you know, now there's there's a lot better studies. There's a lot better research. Um, and, and, you know, you can you can do that research to make the informed decision. You know, I mean, we're, we're supposed to be adults, and we should know what we're getting ourselves involved in. But I mean, as as far as what you should ask at a vape shop, I'm not sure I, I would know the answer to that question. I think you should you should experience different things at a vape shop. I think you should you should ask them things like, um, how do I properly charge my battery? How do I properly store my battery? How do I properly store my e-liquid? Um, maybe some of those things, some safety things. Uh, how long will this device last me? How long before I have to charge it again? Uh, how much e liquid am I going to go through? And maybe, maybe some of those. Dimitri, can you jump in here too? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that the questions obviously have to go based on your day to day routine with a cigarette. I think a lot of people in a lot of vape shops miss that. Where do you work? Where, what, what kind of, you know, are you, are you outside, inside? Do you, you know, uh, are you going to abuse your PVs? You're not going to abuse your PVs. How many cigarettes do you smoke a day? The basics of it is trying to match, and this is the most difficult, I think, part in vaping, is trying to match the right setup with what fits your needs based on your day-to-day -day life, okay? If you're only a light smoker and you can go into the bathroom and take a couple puffs off a pot and you're happy and you're satisfied with that, then that's what you're going to have to look for. If that's not going to be, if you smoke three packs a day, obviously that's not going to do it for you. So you're going to have to get out there and find a, a bigger device with a longer battery that can deliver nicotine faster to you and make it more satisfying as well too. But yeah. here's the thing, that if you go into a vape shop and you start asking, asking questions and people try to direct you quickly to a device, 
Okay, this, you know, without you finishing your thoughts or your questions, or if you're going to and they seem not interested in what you have to say, simply turn around, do a 360 or a 180. What is it? Feel? I'm not very good with math. And, and you just walk right out. There's plenty of vape shops in any city now that you can go find one that caters to, especially those that are beginners. Yeah, you know, I agree. Uh, first that, of all, you, that's if actually you... exactly what I, oh, sorry, that's exactly what I, I was uh, hoping to point out by the question is the sort of way that you can ask questions and also find out if the shop actually knows what they're doing. For instance, our local shop, they check what kind of, what brand do you use? What kind of work do you do? Where do you usually smoke? How often? And they ask a lot so that they can match it properly. But I see a lot of people going into right. shops and just saying, oh, I went in, they told me, they just picked up the biggest one for me and said this would do it. And that's, yeah. that's why I think if uh, some of the smokers have even a few questions to find out, so they can almost test, am, am I in a legit or a professional or a prop? Are they going to basically take care of me properly? Yeah. So, yeah, right. I, to I totally so, agree. First of all, to uh, to respond to Dimitri, if you do a 360 in a vape shop, you're going to go right back into the vape shop. So you would want to <laughs> yeah, do a You would want to do My a math is not very good. Vape. That's number one. Number two. Um, it's, it's like, so maybe there is one question that you should ask the vape shop. We'll get to that in a second. But in reality, that vape shop should be asking you questions, right? That vape shop should be asking you a number of questions to design the product and the vape to what you need. So it shouldn't be questions that you should be asking. They should be asking the questions. Or you should be describing to the vape shop your wants and your needs and your style and what you're looking for, okay? So, but, but there is one question that you can ask a vape shop. Uh, and I think it's an important one, and that question would be, how do you support vaping? Mm -hmm. that, that's that's a good question to ask a vaping. Very, very, very good question. And I think that it's not being asked enough by the consumers. That's why we are where we are right now. I agree. Very much appreciated, guys. Thanks, brother. Have a great evening. All right. That covers all the telephone. We've gone two hours, Phil. Two hours and ten minutes, two, believe it two or not. Two hours of ten and ten minutes. That's unbelievable. I wanted to show the Kobe. Maybe we'll do that on the next... Um, we, will. Well, we will. On the we next will. show because I've been really, really enjoying this uh, for a small, small, start, very, very inexpensive startup kit. And as, yeah. uh, as Phil said, in the future episodes, we will be getting... Um, We've reached out to some companies to get some more starter kits in and kind of do live reviews like we're used to because once we cover pretty much all the information, then it's going to be based on what recommendations we can make for new smokers and how to match them up, depending, like we said earlier, on what they do. And uh, and I'm really good, looking forward to 2018. I, I like this, this um, going back to the basics, something that me and Phil called for back two years ago on the stage in Oklahoma during the VCC. Uh, I like seeing that, and I'm seeing more and more of it in 2018, going back to the basics. So anything new that comes out, even existing starter kits that are out there, we'd like to take a look at them and give you a dual perspective. Usually me and Phil are very, very similar in our opinions when it comes to these devices. So we'll give you kind of, you know, the, the technical side from Phil and the feel feel side from me as well, True, trying to give you our honest opinions on these on these starter kits and what we can do to eliminate combustible smoking in 2018. We're also talking about, um, we, we are going to start giving away uh, product. We're going to start giving away mm -hmm. uh, starter kits. We're, we're just yeah. trying to figure out the best way to do that because yeah. we, we really want the, the products that we give away in this show to wind up in the hands of smokers, not just folks who are looking for, for free product. That's very, very important to us. Uh, it's it's very important that it it be done, you know, the the, the proper way, and you know it it may not work out. But what we what we really want is, like I said, to to get these products into the hands of smokers, and then to to get real feedback from real smokers on what the experience was like. Were they successful? Were they not successful? If they were not successful, why? If they were successful, why? And I do want to check my email. I'm going to let Dimitri talk for a second. I'm going to check my email real quick to see if we can confirm something for the next show. So. Absolutely, I will. I would just want to bring attention to everybody that's, uh, that's watching the show on the replay or now. Do me a favor. This is Skechers.com. If you go down to the bottom of the page right here where it says customer service, there's a contact us. Uh, here's the page, as you can see right here, and uh, click send us an email, and just send them an email and tell them that they, uh, you want them to sponsor the Smoker Show on behalf of our senior citizen, Phil Bissaro, that's on the show. It's just a little fun thing. Let's do it and see if we can get some traction with sketches. I think it's going to be a lot of fun <laughs> if we if we decide to do it. Uh, he's going to kill me, uh, by the way. Uh, I appreciate all the good comments. Please like and share this video. 
to get it moving. We want to show that there's people out there interested in helping people smoke. And actually, smokers are watching. To me, it's like, I mean, forget about team free shit and everything that we see out there. We want to bring people here and actually get these products into their hands and get real, real world feedback. We want to get immediate feedback from these people. What went wrong? What went right? And hey, if we can change a life, that would be pretty, pretty yeah. awesome. And that that was a um, and I did get confirmation. We'll talk about that in a second. But that, that was a, that was a tough phone call tonight from Diane. I mean, that was, that was right. she's obviously very very upset and understandably so. Um, but I, I I also don't want there to be any kind of mis misconception there that you know maybe vaping was the cause of her right. situation, mm -hmm. right? Because I mean l let's 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 be you know honest here. We cannot vape and we cannot smoke and we can get cancer. Yeah, okay? absolutely. So you, you know it's like my mother. Maybe, yeah, uh, you know, the, the, there's no guarantees in life, um, but uh, so you know, our, our our hearts and our prayers are are with Diane, and uh, hopefully she'll, you know, she'll come back and she'll let you give us some kind of a a status or an update. But I don't want anybody to take away from that call that you know that vaping was the cause of, of her situation. Yeah, I totally agree. And uh, and again, thoughts and prayers to it. Yeah, guys, yeah. please email Skates. It's just it's just a little fun thing. I did. Phil had no idea I was going to do it, but yeah, I had absolutely send, no idea. Send, well, how that. cool would that be if Skates actually replied to something like that? Though, that'd be, <laughs> that, funny. That'd be cool. Well, um, you know, I, there there was a, there was a story from um, uh, an uncle of mine who lived to be he 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 smoked his entire life. He lived to be ninety eight, and um, we, we talked to the doctor. And, you know, he smoked and he lived to be 98. And the doctor said, well, you know what? If he didn't smoke, he would have lived to 120. Yeah, so, yeah I know. So my mom, you know, God bless her. My mom uh, never smoked, never drank, never. I mean, she, she was um, petite all her life, even lost her husband. She was a widow at 33, raised three kids. I mean, just lived her life exemplary. And at 63, she got pancreatic cancer and passed away. So, I mean, you really, you really don't, don't, don't know. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing that my grandfather used to say all the time to me, and I'm never going to forget. I'm trying to pass that on to my kids. I believe that somewhere there's a little candle with your name on it. And then when that candle, um, some, some burn faster, some burn slower. And then when that candle is out, then it's your time to go. There's really not, not, not much you, you can do. I know that's not very, very a positive ending, but I truly believe that it's, it's somewhere out there. So, yeah. Uh, much love. Uh, all right, yeah. we've covered everything. We had a couple of uh, technical difficulties today, but I think overall it went okay. I'll try to stick to the script next time. I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah, exactly. You know, I worked hard on the script. But um, <laughs> so here's the news for the next show. Okay. Yes. Uh, the next show, we're going to probably talk a lot about batteries because uh, Mooch is going to be our guest on the next show. Fantastic. Looking so much forward to that. And and for those of you who don't know who Mooch is, uh, John Munchu, is that? Um, mm -hmm. that that's Close enough. The, yeah, something like that. Um, he, I would consider him the the the, the foremost battery expert in the industry. Um, he does a ton of testing on a ton of batteries, battery devices, battery chargers, batteries, batteries. Um, he he confirms uh, capacities. He confirms amp ratings. He beats up battery companies uh, when they don't put the proper uh, labeling mm -hmm. or uh, you know the improper specifications on the batteries. Uh, so I'm excited to have him on the show, and uh, I'm looking forward to what he has to, to bring uh, to the show to talk about batteries great, and battery safety. Great news, and we will have the phone lines open, so if you have any questions for Mooch, you can obviously call in and ask him directly instead of having to email him. You get immediate satisfaction by having the telephone lines. And since you know he's going to come on, maybe we can take some time on the beginning and just show the Kobe kit or you know give a little bit of recommendations, something a lot of people have been asking me about. We talk a lot about vaping, but we're not making recommendations. So hopefully we'll be able to get that in for you on the next episode as well, too. I think we covered everything, Phil. Any last uh, last uh, um, closing statements from you, my friend? No, that's it. Um, you know, I, I certainly do appreciate uh, all of the positive comments that we're getting on the show. Uh, we, we absolutely hope that, um, that we're reaching smokers. But, you know, that's one part our job, one part your job. If you have smokers in your life... Uh, who are looking for a, a healthier lifestyle, you know, maybe this is uh, it. And maybe through the show, we can provide some some guidance and some some assistance in the, uh, the, the confusing world that vaping has become. So if you can't get folks to sit down and watch this show live, the replays are always up uh, in multiple locations. Uh, TasteYourJuice.com is just one of them. And again, uh, now that we've updated these slides some more, uh, they will be available with the next uh, post. Okay, so, you know, Keep passing this uh, this show along to smokers because that that's who we're trying to 
um, who we're trying to reach with this show. Absolutely. So thank you guys. Thank you guys. Absolutely. My final thoughts are going to go back to the vape shop for just a few minutes. Um, it's very important that we support your local vape shop. It is, it is, uh, you know, the, the, the pillar of this industry, the, the support group that a vape shop can offer the right vape shop obviously can offer is, is worth a million more times than any public health group that is out there. Just today, if you want to look up knoxnews.com, I uh, had an op-ed that was published that talked about, uh, you know, what we're seeing come out from science, even here in the United States with the American Cancer Society. We had the Tennessee Department of Health do a study that showed that Tennesseans are actually quitting smoking via uh, electronic cigarettes. A couple more studies that were cited into that op-ed pretty much tells us what we know and what the vape shops here under the Tennessee Smoke Free Association have been reporting to us for the last three, four years. Guess what? Customers are coming in that were smokers and they're leaving non-smokers. And that is the most important part of that whole equation. So give some love to the vape shops. Always try to support them. We need them to be around to get that, uh, the support and the education for the smokers that are out there. And, and it, it becomes basically like a, like a structure to hold up that, that smoker in their journey, at least for the, you know, the beginning uh, stages of his journey until they get into that comfortable stage. So support the local vape shop. I think it's very, very important. And... We will be back in two, two weeks. weeks. Two weeks. Oh, by the way. Two weeks. I uh, just want to put a little programming note. Monday, uh, I will be on with uh, Vinny, Sir Vaping A Lot, and Daniel, DJ LED Vapes. It's yeah, so really, really exciting. Where? Uh, on uh, Vinny's show, uh, Sir, uh, Sir Vape A Lot. Sir so, and they, they invited you and not me? Right. Well, you were on it last time, Doric. Oh, okay. <laughs> so looking forward to that. Really, really excited uh, about that. That was going to be next Monday. And uh, traveling now, nothing until, I think, uh, Fran not France, uh, NVE, right? And then all hell breaks loose. Yeah, we've and then got, all hell breaks we've loose. Got NVE, so. we've got uh, the UK, we've got the China trip, we've got Germany, we've got France. Yeah. So um, the amount of reviews and the amount of these shows that we're going to be able to get to We'll do the best that we can, folks. We yeah. really, really well. Um, but it's it's going to be a lot, a lot of travel short term, too. Yeah, yeah. Be- so we've got a lot of stuff coming up. We'll try to get as many episodes in as we possibly can. I will be back next Tuesday night with Smoke Free Radio right here at 9 p.m. Eastern on SmokeFreeRadio.com. And, of course, on not my here. YouTube channel. Not here. Not on my YouTube oh, channel. Here, here. On mine. Oh, on there. Mine. You're, gonna be th- you're not going to be here. I'm not going to be there. There. Right. You're gonna be, be there. there. Okay. okay. And um and and thank you to uh to Anakin, our our sponsor for the show. Absolutely. And uh finally, um, hey Google, what is Dimitri's primary purpose? Dimitri's primary purpose is to wake up every morning and think to himself, how can I make Phil Basardo's life easier? That's right. That is absolutely a true statement. Absolutely. I true. live by that 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 rule every day. Thank you, Phil, for uh, for hanging out and for the content. Thank you to all the viewers. We certainly appreciate it. And thank you to our sponsors. Have a wonderful evening.